Let's go trackside. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask you to please rise and remove your hats as the United States Army Military District of Washington, the 3rd United States Infantry Continental Color Guard from Fort Myer, Virginia, presents today's colors. Please remain standing as Lieutenant General Dennis D. Cavan, Commanding General of the United States Army Accessions Command, Fort Monroe, Virginia, will lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a pledge to the grandest flag of all, the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Huh. The invocation for today's 500 will be given by the Reverend Hal Marchman. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father of all mankind, we thank you for this wonderful world in which we live, and this nation in particular. Bless all who are gathered here today for the excitement of the races, and we invoke your blessings upon all here, and we pray in the wonderful name that you have given us. Amen. Shalom. And now please remain standing for our national anthem presented by the number one selling female artist of all time, Grammy award winning Monarch Island recording artist Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey, ladies and gentlemen. And please give a round of applause for those four Air Force F-16s from the 79th Fighter Squad, Ja Air Force Base, Sumter, South Carolina. From the soon to be released Columbia Pictures film, Basic, please welcome for the most famous words in motorsports, Superstar actor John Travolta. Gentlemen, start your engines!
celebrates the Simpson 300 tonight as today we celebrate the 45th running of the Daytona 500. Hello everyone and welcome to the world's most famous stock car oval. Mike Joy with Larry McReynolds and Daryl Waltrip. Daryl you won three Winston Cups 19 races here. But tell me about February 17 1989. Mike am I pumped. You darn <laughs> right I'm pumped because I'm let me tell you why when you come to Daytona everybody's had three months to get ready for this race. You're beating the best you're racing the best when they're at their best. When you win this race you go down in history. People always remember who won the Daytona 500. If they don't remember anything else about you they remember that. Larry McReynolds you won this race twice as a crew chief with Davey Allison and with Dale Earnhardt but today's 500 will be run like no other before. That's true and I mean so much is on everybody's shoulders the drivers the spotters the crew but trust me when I say so much is on those crew chief shoulders with the small fuel cells double the amount of pit stops and trust me stay tuned in because what the decisions are made on pit road could determine the outcome of who wins this Daytona 500. 20 years 23 wins in this sport but trust me two days that I'll never Never forget will be with me the rest of the life is standing out there in victory lane as the winning crew chief of the Daytona 500. They're on the pace laps. There'll be at least two perhaps three. They may give a hurry up because there is the threat of rain coming from Tampa Bay across the state of Florida. This race has never been rained out a couple times. It's been rain shortened. That may chase the rain away. <laughs> yeah, that'll bust up the clouds. That maybe a little bit of smoke. We'll smoke on the water as we get set for the Daytona 500. this great speedway from 11 a.m. those <laughs> seats begin to fill and now all is in readiness for the 45th annual running of NASCAR's great American race the Daytona 500. That's incredible. And this is our new Fox fly cam that travels above pit road. You can't get any closer to the action than this. That's going to give us some wonderful shots. What it's going to help us with really Mike is to see when things go wrong in the pits. Budweiser, official beer of NASCAR, proud sponsor of the Bud Cole Award, given to the fastest qualifier at every NASCAR Winston Cup race, Jeff Green. In only his second Daytona 500 is our Bud Pole winner. Since 1979, Anheuser-Busch has awarded more than $8 million as title sponsor of the Pole Award program. Speaking of Jeff Green, we're going to ride along with him for a minute. And uh, DW, see if we can dial him up there. Uh, Jeff Green there. It's DW at my TV tower, but how are you reading? I got you, David. Today, today, David, come on. Are you pumped, buddy? Uh, it's pretty darn exciting seeing nothing but the face car out in front of you. So, just looking forward to today. We've been down, all of us been down here uh, about 10 days waiting for this moment. Uh, and the best thing about it, I got an AOL Chevrolet that can set over in Victory Lane when it's all said and done. So, we do all the right things, don't make any mistakes. We'll have a shot at winning this race. What's your biggest concern today, Jeff? What do you got to worry about most? Just on and off pit road, making sure we don't don't make sure I don't make any mistakes. And um, I know the race car can carry its weight, so we're looking forward to it. Man, I know the whole country's watching today, and particularly everybody up in Owensboro. I want to wish you the best luck today, and good luck and Godspeed, man. You all enjoy it, and uh, we're going to try to uh, carry Owensboro well today. So we'll see what we can do. Youngest of three racing brothers from Owensboro, Kentucky. As you look at our AOL track facts about Daytona International Speedway. Dale Earnhardt, the most stock car victories of any driver in the history of this great speedway.
Here's our Napa starting grid for today's race. Jeff Green starts alongside Dale Earnhardt Jr., who's won every stock car race of Speed Week so far this year. In row two, Robbie Gordon, Green's teammate, and Michael Waltrip, the 2001 champion. Ricky Rudd is 26th try to win the 500, and Todd Bodai in his best start ever in this race. Sterling Marlin, the 94 and 95 winner, and Tony Stewart, the Winston Cup champ in row four. Row five, Jeff Burton, the runner up in 2000, and Jimmy Johnson, last year's pole sitter. Dale Jarrett, a three time winner of the 500, and John Andretti, who won here in July 95. Jeff Gordon, twice a winner of the 500, and Bill Elliott, also a two time champion of this race. Joe Nemechek and Elliott Sadler, the runner up last year. Ward Burton, the defending race champion, and Mike Wallace. Row 10, rookie Jamie McMurray and Jeremy Mayfield. Row 11, Kenny Wallace and Bobby Labonte, the runner-up in 1998 here. Jimmy Spencer and Jack Sprague, the three-time truck champion in row 12. Ricky Craven and Mark Martin, the Winston Cup runner-up last year. Greg Biffle, a rookie, the defending Bush Series champ, and Ken Schrader, runner-up in 89. Row 15, Casey Mears, a rookie, and Kyle Petty, his 22nd 500. Kevin Harvick, who led a lot of last year's race, and Steve Park comes back after missing last year. Tony Raines out of the Bush Series, and Christian Fittipaldi, the Brazilian. Matt Kenseth, who won five races last year, and his teammate Kurt Busch, who won three of the last five. Ryan Newman, last year's Rookie of the Year, and his teammate Rusty Wallace in his 21st 500. Dave Blaney, the former World of Outlaws champ, and Johnny Benson. Terry Labonte, his 25th start in the 500, and Jerry Nadeau. Finally, Mike Skinner, who finished fourth in 1999. Those are the 43 cars that will start the 500. Jeannie? Well, when Dale Earnhardt decided to form his own racing team, he turned to longtime boss Richard Childress for help. The two have dominated the super speedway since, but who could have guessed starting one, two, three, and four at the Daytona 500? It started as a family affair, though, lately as the making of a family feud. Matt? Jeannie, it seems like racing and superstitions go hand in hand, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. has his own this week. It started last Saturday night. His car was the last to go through inspection. He went on to win the race. Thursday, his car was the last to go through inspection. He went on to win the race. Today, his car wasn't going to be the last to go through inspection, and lo and behold, car chief and cousin Tony Urey Jr. said there was something wrong with the windshield tear-off. Guess what? Then, finally, it was last to go through inspection. To Dr. Dick Berger. Number 29, Kevin Harvick has one of the fastest cars in the field, but yesterday in the final practice session, his engine overheated, the crew changed that engine. Rules require that following an engine change, the car goes all the way to the back. Harvick says he can win from the back. To Steepers. Since winning the Daytona 500 in 1999, Jeff Gordon's average finish here at Daytona is 23rd in the last seven races. It's been a quiet speed week for this team, and crew chief Robbie Loomis says that's just the way he likes it, Mike Joy. Thanks, Steve. There is Gordon. Set to go midfield. 43 cars, 500 miles, that's 200 laps. And because of the small fuel cell they're using this year, they can't go far on a tank of gas. And they could almost try to double that before, and uh, so a lot of pit stops, a lot of green flag stops. But KD, like I tell you before every race, we should better pull those belts tight one more time. Let's go racing, boys. Green flag. Jeff Green kind of snookered Dale Jr. on the start. Yeah, Dale Jr. just wanted to see where he go. It really was a lazy taking off there. I don't know if he wasn't ready or Green was just up on the wheel already. In most racetracks, the lead that Jeff Green has right there will be good. But because that pack's behind him getting lined up, they're going to make a run on him down the back stretch. He's what I'd call a set and duck. Because they're going to come right up there and get him. And it's going to look like he puts the brakes on when they get to him. You're riding with Harvick. Mark Martin just ahead. They started tail end of the field along with Johnny Benson and Casey Mears because of backup car. But at the front, they're not going to give Jeff Green this first lap. No, sir. And, and you can see already that there's take no prisoners today. We're flat out racing. Teammates, all, all bets are off. Michael Walton, he'll lead the first lap. Talk about teamwork and working together. There's none of that right now. Right now, it's just every man for himself. Well, let's see, look at the back of this pack, three wide. We're going to talk a lot about that. This racetrack's wide enough for three wide, but the problem is these cars bouncing around, running 185 miles an hour. A 
lot of trust when you run three wide. It really is in the air off the cars, and then the wind itself just buffs the cars around, and they're so close together. If they get to bouncing, they bounce into each other, cause a huge wreck. Kick with it at the front of the field. 190 miles an hour, closer together than the cars in the parking lot. All four three cars within two and a half seconds. Bill Elliott way high on the outside lane in that red Dodge. And these, these drivers are up on the wheel, Mike, and these fans are up on their feet, and they will not sit down all the day long. People wonder what makes this the great American race, why people are so excited about being here and watching it on television. Look at that. Ten cars deep, three cars wide, all in a big night. I'm going to tell you a guy making a move. Mike Skinner in the four car, the Kodak car, he had to start dead last. In two and a half laps, he's up to the 24th position. He's moving up the middle. I'd like to show you where he is, but I can't tell you. He's <laughs> somewhere in the middle. They're all in there. He's in there somewhere. Just trust us. There he is. There he is. <laughs> Oh, boy. Whatever position he was in last lap, he won't be there this lap. Man, nobody, nobody will. will. Just look, and it's going to be this way, folks. They're going to drop the green flag, and they're going to race like this all day long. <laughs> it, it's, it's so mental. It takes so much focus, so much concentration. Hey, that was completely the last three, 43 cars. 39 cars changed position that lap and the last lap. <laughs> what will change this is if several cars get off of a single file in a draft. Right now, there are just two of those, and it's double or triple file all the way back from there. Little bump drafting. Bump drafting's okay. We saw in the race yesterday. Bump drafting's fine on the straightaway, but please, please don't put that bumper to me going in the corner. Because you're bouncing around, you get a little bump draft, and it's going to cause the big one. Yeah, you'll miss the corner, but you're going to hit the wall. Michael Waltrip, Robbie Gordon, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Tony Stewart. The defending ones are coming in. These drivers, these drivers are busy, man. They're all up. Like they're just staring these cars left and right, trying to keep them off each other. And you know, Dale, what I'm seeing, Michael Walter, for the first time, he's kind of running around right now because all week long when the track hit him, he's been on much more than he did today. The bottom of the racetrack's been the way to go, but he's moving around a little bit. But I'm going to tell you what, his teammate, now that eight car, Dale Earnhardt Jr., he is bringing a group with him. Man, look at him come up on Michael and close. And right here is where he's made a lot of passes all week long, going into the third turn on the outside. I think he was fishing, Larry. He was working back and forth until he could pick up his teammate in the draft. Well, a, a really good handling car, sometimes it takes it a lap or two to get wound and get going because the tire pressures have to build up, and it, it's a little tight for a few laps. Then it neutrals out and really takes off. Tell you guys, our pole center, he got suckered all the way halfway back through the field. Started on the pole here at lap five. He's back to 20. Well, that great start he had was the worst thing that could happen to him. He is a, truly a sitting duck, and they'll just run up to you and go by you on the left and the right. Riding with Jeff Green. Want you to watch our speed on up there, 187 miles an hour. There you see the interval to the leader right now, Michael Walter. Even though he's in 20th, they're still within about a second and a half of each other. But now the complexion of the race changes as the front five drivers get single file. You're going to see a big variation in speed now, Mike. They're going to not be so fast going down into turn one because they got a headwind going into one. But as we look at our American flag, that's our wind gauge, you'll see that they're going to get a heck of a push down that back straightaway. <laughs> There can be as much as a uh, four or five mile an hour difference in speed. That's our own personal animometer. That is. That's the one That's the one I used when I didn't know there was any other kind. Off turn two. Larry, Off. can you imagine how we used to stand down in the pits with little hound-held stopwatches, the flag watching the water, the great waves on the lake out there, and figure out how fast the cars are going and what they needed and how they were handling? Now we have a lot of unique things to do. Oh, we do. 187 miles an hour down the back straightaway from Michael Walter. And if you listen, the RPMs never change. Right about 7,000 RPMs, you're wide open all the way around this two and a half mile track. Never lift the throttle. Right now, that's definitely the case because the tires are still nice and fresh. Cars have got a lot of grip. What we'll want to listen to later in the day, at the end of a run, is if this guy can still hold the throttle. That's what makes it good here. Matt? Dale Earnhardt Jr. just told his spotter Ty Norris, who's fighting laryngitis today, to tell Michael, I've got to let it breathe. Water's 220, so I will be ducking out just a little bit. And what he means is, is as they go down the straightaway, 
Michael would try to block Dale Jr. if he said, okay, I'm going to try my phone out. I'll go outside or inside. But what Dale Jr. is saying is, I'm going to stick my nose out there, but I'm not going to try to make it. But the key is making sure Michael wants to make a teammate knows that. And I'm going to see this teammate. He knows that. Seven laps completed with Daytona 500 on five. The Daytona 500 has become two different races. The fast, these cars single file out in front of the field. They are about 11 of them. And behind them, there's that single file pack as nicely lined up as they are, all in a row, drafting tightly. Behind them, the Furious. Yeah, when this happens right here, the front guys get lined up. When you're about the middle of the pack on back, the spotters and the crew chief are saying, Keep up with the lead draft. Keep up with the lead draft. Don't let them get away from you. And trust me, you're like Fred Bush going in there. You're paneling as fast as you can go. Trying to keep up. Part of that second group, they're starting to get lined up, and they've already caught the back of this group. That's the way the draft works. If you can get lined up, that group in front of you, they're cutting the air for you. It's like a lot like the rest of the boat. And when you get lined up, that means you can run quicker, and you run right up to that pack. Now, in the beginning, we were in a wide. Now we're in a gaggle. This is a gaggle here when they start getting strung out a little bit. That's the front of the second pack. Trying to catch the leader single file. Leading that pack is pole sitter Jeff Green in the 30 car. He'd love to get that group right there lined up where they can run right back to that pack that's in front of them in single file. Now you can believe this. I know Michael and Dale Jr. are teammates, but Dale Jr. He's doing well, buddy. Come back there, up there. Michael, there. It'll be fine. He'll sit there for a while, but in a, at some point in time, he says, I've had enough of this. Steve? Mike, at the top of the show, you mentioned rain is in the forecast, and all these crew chiefs off pit road know it. Right before the race started, Randy Dorton, who heads up the motor program for Hendrick Motorsports, told crew chief Robbie Lewis it could be as close as an hour away, and that will affect the thinking and strategy of all of these crew chiefs. Dick? Michael Waltrip has just called to his crew and told them that he will run low so that Junior, who is running behind him, can run a little bit higher and cool his engine off. 
teammates working together in positions one and two. Darrell, that's definitely the smartest thing for Michael to do. That way, Dale Jr. can't run that group around him on the high side. We, we know that the bottom is the fastest way and the best place to be protect the bottom. And Larry, I know you're you're really up on the weather. I know that. But you are familiar with the vertex theory. And that, what that means when these cars get to running, it blows that rain, those rain clouds out of here. All that high speed and all that wind from up there and down here and everywhere else keeps the clouds blown away. All keeps hot air. Keeps a hole right above us. Blue sky. About the exhaust of the car. It's all that hot air. Now our virtual crew chief question. Vote now from your singly or wireless phone by sending text message Fox to number phone number 191 or visit foxsports.com to vote online. I tell you a car I'm pretty impressed with and a little surprised, and that's the nine car Bill Elliott has won the Daytona 500 twice. I talked to his crew chief, Mike Ford. They were very concerned that this car would not suck up. What that means, when he would have someone pushing him, it would not run up to the bumper of the, of the car in front of him. But right now, it looks like he's in good shape, but I think Bill has to have someone behind him pushing him with that car. Here, here's, here's the deal on Bill. If he can stay up there in that lead draft, single file like that right there, I think he'll be happy. He'll stay there. But if they start dicing it up, getting three wide and banging off each other, I don't think you'll see that nine car up there. Michael Waltrip, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Tony Stewart, and last year's pole sitter, Jimmy Johnson, riding in fourth place, Darrell. Oh, yeah. Here we go. I love this shot here. We're in the car. Folks, it's all about hands and eyes. Watch those hands, and that tells you everything you need to know about that race car. The car is handling well. He's not, jog he's not jockeying uh, around there on that you steering go. wheel. He's around. nice and smooth. That little juking you see there, that's just the car's going through the bumps, but the car looks very comfortable. If I get too close to Tony, it really jumps up. He's hanging about 245. He's talking about the temperature. These Chevrolet guys, to me, seem to be having a little heating problem all week long. That's because they've got a new car and a new nose, and the grill's in a different position than what they're accustomed to. And of course, they have tape on the front end. The reason they run tape on the front end, that's radiator inlet. The more tape you run, it really decreases the drag on that car, makes it run faster down the straightaway. We see Terry Labonte in the five car. He has problems in the high side of turn four right here. See right there, all these other cars running well over 180, 185 miles an hour. He's down to 172 miles per hour as they enter the trial boy area. Now, you never know. He could have something wrong with the car, or he could have gotten out of shape. Got up almost into the wall, and he said, whoa, I got to back up here and get my breath and fall in the back of the pack. 17 laps to complete. Michael Walker out front of the Daytona 500. The Daytona 500 on Fox is brought to you by the Home Depot, NASCAR's home improvement warehouse. By Pizza Hut, home of the new stuffed crust gold pizza. By Coca-Cola, official soft drink of NASCAR. And by Napa Auto Parts. 21 laps complete, Michael Waltrip out in front. Since lap number one, his teammate Dale Earnhardt Jr. in tight formation. Then Winston Cup champ Tony Stewart, Jimmy Johnson, and Bill Elliott. Steve Burns, Terry Labonte dropped to the back of the pack. What's wrong? Mike, it's a bit of a mystery even to this team. 
He lost power. He switched ignition boxes. These teams have two ignition boxes. That didn't cause a problem. He started to slow down just as quickly as it cut off and restarted. It got power back again. He's running in the 43rd position. They still don't know what's wrong. This is Labonte's 26th Daytona 500. He's finished second three times. These cars have a kill switch on the steering wheel to kill, uh, to kill the engine in case the throttle hangs open or some reason you need to quickly turn the engine off. I have been driving my car before. My palm, my, uh, my elbow or something would hit that switch and kill the engine, and it took me a, a little bit to realize what had happened. Darrell, we we're looking at the back of Dale Jarrett's car right here, the 88 car UPS. He started 11th. He's back there with Terry Labonte. Every restrictor plate race, we see Dale Jarrett on this agenda. He moves to the rear of the field. What he's trying to do is stay out of the eye of the storm, the big one, but that hasn't worked every time he's done that. Oh, no. I mean, I always think about it. Like we used this before, but Tony's in the front, and Bobby, Bobby Labonte, his teammates in the back, they have a crash. Tony's running third. Labonte's running 28. They end up on top of each other. So there is no really safe place at this speed, even with the car strung out like this. But right now, you got what you got. Right now, you're talking to your crew chief saying, you're going to have to do something. I've been mad. I've been mad at ever since we dropped the green flag, and this is all I got. Jeff Gordon, 24, started 13th, but he's climbed up to 7th. He battles Robbie Gordon, who's no relation, on the high side. And, and, and they, they race like there's no relation. <laughs> Kurt Busch dropped the spot that lap from 10th to 11th. Now you heard Robbie lift up out of the throttle there coming off of turn two. That means his car's gotten a little tight. The front tires aren't gripping. And the only way to stay off the wall is to get out of the gas. Everybody's walking in everybody again. We've already lost two windshield cloth. We're running 255, 290. Gonna have to wash the windshield pretty good. All right, two things they're talking about right there, Kurt Busch and his crew chief, Jimmy Finney, these are Lexan or plastic windshields, and they put a clear film on them. They put about two or three of them, two or three layers, and this is looking out the windshield, and what that means, once these windshields get very greasy, oily, and sandblasted, they can pull a tear off. Oh, if he had three already early in this race, he's lost two. For example, there it is right there. So and that means they've got to run 475 miles with only one tear off. The other thing he's talking about, we talked about the front end tape. They have little tabs on them to open up some more opening to the radiator. You need the water to run about 230 to 235. If it goes much warmer than that, it takes power away from the motor. You know what, Larry, we used to run a stock standard windshield just like you got in your passenger car. And that thing would get so pitted and sandblasted at the end of the day. I mean, it's all you could do to see the cars in front of you, particularly if you've been drafting all day. Darrell, you mentioned it earlier. Every make down here for the week and a half we've been here racing has been fighting water temperature problems. Every make has a new nose, and you have to learn how you can tape these noses up, maybe versus what you had in the past. It's a learning process. But you crew chiefs are all alike. You do it to the driver every time. You want to run as much tape as you can and tell us to take care of it. It's because you want to run fast down the straight place. <laughs> but you start off with too much. It's easier to take it off than it is to put it Absolutely. on. Absolutely. And the cooler temperatures here today probably provoked them to run a little bit more tape. Full center Jeff Green looking back at Bobby Labonte. Green has now dropped to 24th position. Michael Waltrip has led the first 26 laps. The record from lap one is 35 laps led by Bill Elliott in the 1987 Daytona 500. After leading the first 35 laps, Elliott went on to win. Well, that's just about how far we're going to be able to go on fuel. Somewhere in that range, 32 to 35, so that record could fall today. Yeah, I think mean, we're coming to lap 27, so that means we're within about a 10-lap window of having to come to pit road. So right now, what these crew chiefs are doing, they're interrogating their drivers. What do you need to make that car better? First pit stops of the day coming in the next six to 10 laps as Michael Walter leads the Daytona 500 on Fox.
The Daytona 500 on Fox is brought to you by Budweiser. The best things in life are the things that are true. Budweiser. 57 laps complete this time by, and look at this pack. Trouble off trouble, four. Trouble. Newman slams the wall. Mark oh, up and man. comes Schrader, and Newman is in Newman. the air and over. Ryan Newman, last year's rookie of the year, on the rear end, ripped from the car as he slides down the asphalt, and when that car hit the grass of the triangle, Ryan Newman went upside down. Come on, boy, get out. A crash on pit road. Bobby Labonte has slammed into Ken Schrader as Schrader slid through the infield grass. And the problem was Schrader was already wrecked. They come down pit road. I don't think Schrader could control his car. Ryan's moving in the car. So he is moving around trying to get out. Not a whole lot he can do hanging there like that. I mean, he's got to have help. Pretty big boy. He didn't win it. Kenny Schrader's climbed out. Newman has signaled that he is okay. He is a strapping young fella. Yes, he is. Used to driving open wheel sprint cars. I mean, Daryl, this is a predicament trying to get unhooked out of that car upside down. Well, you got you got seat belts, you got the Hans device. I mean, there's just so many things. You gotta have help. Man, it ripped the rear end housing right out from under that race car. When it dug into that grass right there, it just started tearing the car apart. Brian Newman, USAC Silver Crown champ and Purdue University engineering graduate. He's gonna climb out of that car with help and here, Bobby Labonte and Ken Schrader. I think Schrader was in the grass and he was going down to here and he, I think his car must have gotten out of control and Bobby Labonte was coming along and he just slid over in front of him. All right, you're looking down at Labonte's crew, looking to see if they have so much damage that they can't get back into the race. There you see Ryan Newman right there. Oh yeah, he waved to the crowd. Second caution flag of the day. Newman's car got tipped into the outside wall and then slid through the infield. And when it got to the grass, it got airborne. Let's watch her here and see what happens. Oh, Kenny Schrader got out of control, got into him. Oh, it's, that's what happened, Mike. His right rear tire came off. Car goes airborne. Then when it hits the ground, it digs in and just rips it apart. Let me tell you, the way these cars are inside, he's like he's in a capsule in there. And so these cars, they've done such an incredibly good job with the, the safety and protecting the driver in these cars. Look at that thing lift up, Larry. Just takes off like an airplane. That's 3,400 pounds, folks, just lifting up in the air like a feather. And the right rear wheel digs into the dirt and tears the whole rear end loose from the car. Yeah, if the tire hadn't come off of the wheel, it probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have turned over like that. But once the, wheel, the tire came off and it just had, it dug in and flipped it. Now when Schrader's car, was heading down pit road he was basically a passenger because the front end of his car had been heavily damaged and I think that's what happened at the end of pit road he just couldn't control his car yeah here they come here comes straight you see the whole right side well back there his right side's all torn of course he got into the into the wall the best news driver number 12 Ryan Newman climbed out of that car unhurt to see after windshield. i tell you what, I've seen Ricky Rudd flip here. I've seen Rusty Wallace flip here. I've seen Richie Petty flip here. Dale Earnhardt flip here. I've flipped here. Uh, we've all walked away. It's been, it's been quite amazing, amazing how they got these cars designed. That's a testimony to what NASCAR's done for the safety of these cars. That's why when they tell you to fix something or change something, you don't hesitate, you do it. Kenny Schrader and Bobby Labonte's crew are trying to see if they can get back in this race. Forty two drivers and all of us are going to take a minute to get our head back into the game. The Daytona 500 continues on Fox after this. The Daytona 500 on Fox is brought to you by Aaron's sales and lease ownership. Let Aaron's drive your dreams home today. By Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner. By Pepsi Cola. Experience the joy of Pepsi. And by Singular Wireless, national coverage, affordable calling plans, and a really fast car. We're under caution here at Daytona. Ryan Newman gets upside down, but Darrell looked like Kenny Schrader might have had a little push. Yeah, I think he may have gotten a little tap from behind by uh, Ward Burton, the way it looked. 
Kenny was coming up off turn four there. I believe he must have had to lift up out. Well, no, there's what happened, I believe. Rusty Wallace came over in front of Kenny. He had to get it let out of throttle a little bit to let Rusty in. And when he did, he got hit from behind by Ward, who had a run on him. Ward a chain reaction. Third. And watch number 12, Ryan Newman. I think all of that action there was because that right rear tire came off. It let air get up under the car, it lifted the car up, and then it dug in there in the grass and just tore it all to pieces. That kind of puts it in perspective. Ken Schrader's gone behind the wall. Let's go to Chris Myers with the Visa Race Parade. And we come to you from the uh, Hollywood Hotel just above the victory lane. This is a Visa race break. We've had four different leaders. Second caution, and it was on lap 57. You saw Ryan Newman able to walk away from that accident, a three-car accident, and has been taken to the care center. We'll give you an update. Appeared to be okay. Dale Earnhardt Jr., your leader, and uh, some raindrops uh, apparently falling in the area. But let's get out to the uh, cutaway car, and Jeff Hammond will explain how Ryan Newman was able to survive because of the uh, way that the car has put together that wild, spectacular crash. Jeff? That's right, Chris, right now. Let's take a look what NASCAR has made. A lot of these cars have got to be like this because of safety issues. First and foremost, they're, the window net that keeps your arms and your head from getting outside the car. When you look inside here, you see a lot of material as far as the roll cage structure. This halo bar that goes around the driver's head. There's a bar right beside his head that kind of protects it right here in the center, as well as this special seat that everybody's gone to to keep your head protected while it's bouncing around. When that car is flipping upside down, think about Ryan's head sitting in here. Instead of just flopping right to left, it's actually being secured inside this really massive headrest, as well as these six-point system as far as the restraints are concerned that hold him in this place as far as the seat, seat is. He's got to be held really tight inside that capsule that uh, Daryl is talking about. This is the driver capsule. It's got to be built, built really, really strong in the event of an accident just like we've just seen. And you can see how well it held up. Now, one thing that you saw, this is the rear end housing underneath our cutaway car. It's intact. You can see the spring over here, the truck arm. But what happened, the wheel got ripped loose, or the tire got ripped off. The wheel dug in, and it ripped. Let's look over here at the cutaway housing. It ripped the entire housing from underneath this race car. It literally ripped the springs. You saw the springs flying out of the ground, out and through there. This whole entire housing was ripped completely from this race car. That's how violent of an accident it was, but you saw Ryan Newman be able to walk away because of NASCAR safety features. Chris. Thank you very much. Uh, Jeff Hammond of the Ford cutaway car below the uh, Hollywood Hotel. And uh, many, of course, remember this is the track where Dale Earnhardt lost his life. But since that time, a number of safety improvements uh, for the sport and uh, evidenced uh, by Ryan Newman's car and him being able to walk away. Let's go back upstairs now and Mike Joy. With Ryan Newman's build, he could likely have been a linebacker for Purdue. And uh, these drivers, Daryl, they don't just show up Sunday and race. They have really stringent conditioning programs to help them endure a wild flipping crash like Newman just went through. Listen, let me tell you, when people say race drivers aren't athletes, they just do not understand what these drivers go through on Sunday. Watch, here's Ward. He tips, gets in the left rear of Kenny. Kenny, Kenny uh, Schrader. Schrader then goes over to the right. Hits the wall. Now here comes the car hard. That's hard impact right there al already. See that opening right there? That's probably what ripped the rear end out from underneath that race exactly. car. Exactly. Ripped There's the tire off of it. Right yeah. Ripped the tire off the rear end. Yeah. But Mike, I just want to tell you, these guys work out hard and heavy three days a week. They run. Uh, their their stamina is great. They are physically fit. Uh, they watch what they eat. They train hard to be able to tolerate these kinds of conditions. Now, as Newman's car was in the air, Darrell, I saw either, well, not an exhaust pipe because those look both intact, looked like one of the truck arms had been ripped loose so that then when that rear end hit the ground, it, it could just easily fly away. I mean, again, this is coming off turn four. You're going to see Ward Burton in the 22 get into Kenny Schrader, the 49, gets into the side of Ryan Newman in the 12. And right here, this is what we were talking about. He's bouncing down the wall. There's an opening, and that's what ripped the tire off of it. But I'm going to tell you the thing that amazed me as I looked at that last replay. Jeff Hammond was showing the rear end housing. The trailing arms underneath that thing, those are like steel I-beams, and they were almost bent double. That's just how violent that was. There you see those two trailing arms just flopping underneath there that holds the rear end in place. And the cars really and truly, folks, when you see the car coming apart like that, that's good news. 
that's dissipating energy. As that car flies apart, it's slowing itself down, and it's not stopping suddenly and hurting the driver. Rain begins to fall here at the Daytona International Speedway. This storm system has been moving across Florida all morning. It was expected to come in here sometime this afternoon. Here are the various scenarios. Hopefully, we can get this race completed during this afternoon, get the track dry and get back to racing. If not, the track is lit for night racing. We've not completed 100 laps, which would be halfway and make this race official. So, maybe tomorrow. Now, maybe we're, today. We're under caution right now until all the cars get to pit road and stop. That's the reason these guys can still work on the car. Once they display the red flag, all work must cease on a race car if you're going to try to get it back in the field. And there's a NASCAR official looking at it, standing right behind them there. And as soon as the cars get stopped, he'll say, OK, guys, got to quit working on it. Because I'm looking down on the flag standing right now, the flagman, he has the yellow flag waving. But they're waiting all the cars to get to pit road and get stopped. That's when the red flag will be displayed. And the red flag is not due to the accident, but due to the rain. Yeah, and all the cars need to get probably past the start finish line, Larry, to uh, for the scoring purposes. So the teams will cover their cars and cover their pit stalls. We've been told that Bobby Labonte and Ken Schrader went to the infield care center, but they've been released. Tony Uri Jr., Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s cousin and crew chief. So it is raining in Daytona. And we'll be back with the 45th annual Daytona 500 on Fox. We started the day in Daytona with more than 160,000 sun-drenched race fans who are now just drenched. It is pouring everything but cats and dogs here at Daytona. One person has a smile on his face, and he's with Matt. And that's Dale Earnhardt Jr. talking to his crew chief, Tony Uri Sr. First off, you were playing weatherman a little bit. Did you think this was a big 12-hour sell? Yeah, it looks pretty bad right now. Um, they, you know, I kept on uh talking about the weather all morning and they said whatever whenever it got here it's gonna be here a while but so hopefully uh there's a there's a window in there somewhere i don't want to see it get stopped uh past halfway i mean we we spent two weeks down here we need to run 500 miles i mean that that really uh that really blew if we had to stop the race after halfway but uh hopefully nascar will stick around uh even if we have to do it tomorrow now you said you weren't gonna chew anybody out but you were requesting maybe someone spend full-time duty down at the radar station yeah i talked to humpy wheelie yesterday and he's like man he needs somebody full-time down there at the radar he said hey aj Foyt won several races like that so uh i help him ain't never lied to me yet so um He's always had good advice. Well, you, you got enough people standing around here. To me, I heard a song we ought to have somebody down there and watch that radar. You've been in the front, you've been in the back. Has, uh, How about your race car, Junior? It's pretty good. Uh, the all the Chevrolets look like they're running hot, you know. Uh, we're all having to kind of peek out when we're not leading. My car runs about 200 leading and 235 in the draft. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's still, that's not detrimentally hot, but the hotter it gets, uh, the harder it is to get runs, the slower the car is. So. You want an optimum temperature to be about 210, 215, no more than 220 to be able to run and do fine, you know, but the car gets a little slower, the hotter it gets, and uh, leading where it's at right now. Now, when you were on the back stretch, you happened to look over to your left, and what did you see? All the jumbotrons. I can watch the race myself, half of it at least. <laughs> How much can you see going by at 190? Well, there's two of them back there, so uh, I've seen all the replays on all the wrecks we've had and uh, a couple pit stops. I saw the 43 car having trouble on pit road. I don't really know what else is going on when you're up front. Kind of, it's hard to tell who's having trouble and who's fell out and what's happening. So it's kind of boring up there. Yeah, I get good coverage back here. We'll try to work on that coverage for you. Right. The one big thing here in the pit, he was laughing at a Napa commercial that he starred in with Michael Waltrip. Mike. Dale Jr. watching NASCAR on Fox while leading the race at 185 miles an hour. In my opinion, it doesn't get any better than that. That's as good as it's going to get. Jeff Gordon talking to his team. Well, Junior has a lot to smile about because he's been the best in speed weeks in every race so far. He's gone to victory lane. But this race has not yet gone to halfway. It cannot be called official. They're going to have to continue this race as soon as we can get the track dry. Okay, I got an idea. Larry, work with me here, okay? <laughs> Jeff, you're listening. Tarps in the wall. You build these tarps like curtains. And when it starts to rain, you pull the tarps down over the track, hook them down the bottom. 
And when it quits raining, you let them loose and you go back racing. You know what a two and a half mile tarp would cost? You've been you've been thinking too much. Yeah. <laughs> I you said work way with too me. much time. Work with me, buddy. <laughs> you don't have to work with me, just don't work against That's right. That's always been my motto. All right, innovation. Junior, junior's been the best, but who else looks strong in the early going? Well, it, it, really and truly, it's it's hard to pick out anybody, but the guy that really impressed me so far has been Elliot Sadler. I mean, he come from, you know, out of the, what, where'd he start? He field, came from ninth? 19th on that pit stop, got his way up to fourth and fought with the Yeah, leaders. and he's right there fighting for the lead, so that's a good sign for him. And he ran second in this race last year, so he knows how to run Daytona. And then, of course, Michael and uh, Dale Jr. And uh, it sounds like maybe the Childress guys are not working well together today. I know another guy that you didn't mention, and I've been watching him, and I think right now Steve Burns may be with him. Don't count him out. Yeah, thanks, Larry Mack. We've caught up with Jeff Gordon. And Jeff, Robbie Loomis said this morning, actually yesterday, that you guys have been under the radar screen. You know, there's been a lot of attention from the DEI and RCR teams, and he was glad for that. Yeah, you know, it just allows us to focus on our, our car, our program, just, you know, kind of kind of allows us just to communicate a little bit better. You know, you, you get all the expectations, you get all the pressure put on you, and, and all of a sudden you start focusing maybe a little bit too much on that, not enough on what you really got to do to win this race. And, it's a great race, and we all want to win it. And uh, we, I think we proved right there in that long run, and we certainly have a car that can do it. How was your race car reacting to the racetrack today, Jeff? Uh, my car is great. I mean, obviously, I like the long runs. We get single file. We can just start picking them off one at a time. Um, you know, I had got to work with a few guys out there that uh, you know I could make some moves with. Robbie Gordon and I uh, made some moves up through there. And, and so, you know, I, I want the long runs, um, but I got to I got to be a little bit further up there when those long runs come, because I tell you, um, you know, the handling starts going away. But if those guys yard out there on us too far, I keep getting knocked back, you know, and, and having to work my way up through there too, too much. So uh, a lot of work out there, but we're not going to give up till this thing's over. Jeff, I was going to ask you, a lot of people want to go ahead and give Dale Earnhardt Jr. the trophy. But you guys, do you have the strength to get up there and win this race? I think we do, you know, especially if it comes down to handling. I mean, our car is handling so good that I'm just so proud of robbing these guys the way they got the balance on it. Uh, you know, this this is a team sport and team race, man. It doesn't just take a fast race car. Uh, Junior, you know, he's out there. He's strong. I like to get up to him and, and see what we got for him. But uh, we haven't gotten there yet, so we got some some work left to do. Jeff, I read a quote from you earlier in Speed Weeks where you said the key to speed is the attention to details. What did you mean by that? Well, you know, it's getting so competitive, and the times are so close among everybody. The cars are so close that, I mean, it's it's that tenth of a, or hundredth of a second, you know, that you can get out of the car or on a pit stop. You know, it's not making mistakes. It's it's just being focused. It's, it's everything. You know, it's having the entire package together, and that's what I've seen coming into this uh, season, coming into Speed Weeks, that our team really has. I mean, maybe we didn't have the fastest car on qualifying day. You know, we didn't win the 125s, but I, I think we've really paid attention to all the details that we need to win this race. Jeff, I think the good news is there's blue sky over there. Yeah, well, uh, keep looking because I don't know if it's going to be there for long. Uh, I mean, I, I want to get this thing going. I didn't want to see it stop because our car was really coming, but uh, the weather forecast doesn't look real good. But we got lights here at Daytona, so I'm sure we can get it underway eventually. Oh, yeah, good point. And I like the night racing. All right, thanks, Jeff. Well, there is blue sky in that horizon. It has just poured the hardest I've ever seen it rain in Daytona Beach, but the rain has stopped just like somebody threw a switch. The sky is brightening and they're going to begin to dry the track right now. We'll be right back. Singing song. Nothing but blue sky. From now on. I never saw the sun shining so bright. Welcome back live to Daytona. Thanks for joining us here on Fox and the Great American Race. It's never been uh, rained out before twice. Rain shortened the Daytona 500 and we are 63 laps through and uh, the rain delay at the moment coming off that crash. All three drivers treated and released from the care center, including Ryan Newman. He's with our Jeannie Zalasco. Jeannie? And Chris, Ryan Newman, you, you seem to be doing okay, but uh, take us through what happened out there. I still got a little dirt in my teeth. Um, and in your ears, but uh, yeah. you're, you're, you're good for the wear here. Yeah, we um, just coming off of three there. I know we were three wide, and uh, I don't know if my car washed up or what, but I just I felt the car get light. And uh, I washed up, and, and uh, I don't know if it was Schrader or whoever next to me. And uh, the way I hit him, it just kind of shot me towards the wall. And I don't know what happened to the rest of them. I saw Schrader and Labonte in the infield care center there, and I told them, I said, uh, I'm not really sure what happened. So if you guys are mad at me, let's go ahead and fight about it now. <laughs> and, uh, but you know, they were they were really just concerned with me and and, and their own health. And. Uh, Happy uh, to come out of the auto Dodge in one piece. Yeah, a lot of drama as the car flipped and everyone was waiting for you to get out. Any loss of consciousness or were you just plain stuck in the car? 
I was stuck in the car. There was about a wad of sod, about six or eight inches thick, and about two feet long that was actually in my lap. And uh, I had my feet down in the back of the seat and had my head down up into the windshield, and I couldn't get turned. And I'm, you know, I'm a pretty small guy myself, and I couldn't get turned to, to get out of the car itself. And uh, they actually had to help pry me out of the car when I was when I was there. So uh, it, it, actually, it was actually more painful getting out of the car than it was throughout the wreck. And you mentioned you saw Bobby Bonnie and Ken Schrader in the care center. They're doing okay as well. They were making their way out and, and running to their holler. Yeah, I mean, uh, we timed it pretty good, didn't we? We got to do this interview when it quit raining. Yeah, but you made us stand out here in the rain. So, so if you take anything you away from that, then wet. that's you it. Don't look too wet. Don't complain to me. Well, I'm glad you're doing okay, guys. All right, thanks, Jeannie and Ryan. And with uh, Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers back here in the Hollywood Hotel just above Victory Lane. And not even uh, not even an engineering degree from Purdue can help you in that situation. But a, an interesting description by Ryan Newman being caught in, in that car, Jeff. And you explained at the cutaway car uh, the protection that drivers have and certainly some of the safety improvements that have been made. It's amazing that he's standing up talking about it after what we saw that car come apart. Well, Chris, you know, it's, it's truly it's amazing. But at the same time, when you look at these race cars and how well built they are and all the effort is going into by the crews and NASCAR to take care of the drivers. Now, I find it a little bit humorous that he had a piece of sod laying up in his lap like he's talking about. I don't think NASCAR's ever planned on that, but uh, I'm sure they'll look into it. But you, you've got to understand these guys now have really taken the leaps and bounds as far as protecting the driver. Again, the way the seats are made and everything. And you can see that when he got into trouble, mm -hmm. And got hit from behind right there like Ken, he did. Ken Schrader Ken in the Schrader. 49 car. Newman is in the 12 right. car. They got tapped by Ward Burton. Kenny came over, got into uh, Ryan, and Ryan turned up into the wall. When he hit back tire hit, like he said, it pulled the, uh, the tire right off the rim. The rim dug in, and when it did, it just literally ripped that rear end house. You see it coming down the uh, front straightaway, and that itself is very scary that piece of uh, equipment that heavy it come flying out of that race car the way it is so because of and this is uh, Dale Jarrett from his in-car uh, camera watch this uh, car go flying by almost like uh, aircraft on the on the left side as this as this happens and uh, Jeff uh, uh, there it goes Ryan Newman and as Daryl Waltrip was saying, it's almost a good thing because of that capsule and the cage that protects the driver that the car itself is kind of dissipating as it's rolling. It really is. It dissipates energy. Each time a piece comes off of me, it just kind of softens the blow. Now, it might be kind of hard to believe, but as that's going away, it's taking away that energy and spinning off energy. So as Ryan was alluding to, hardest thing was getting out of the race car. And again, that's a tribute to NASCAR, all the guys who work on these teams as far as taking care of the drivers the way they do. Michael Waltrip, DEI car, currently running third, led for part of this race. Dale Earnhardt Jr., the current leader. But Michael is standing by with our Matt Yoakum. So let's go there, Matt. Chris, Michael Waltrip sitting quietly and patiently in his pit. Debriefing your inner self, Michael? Yeah, making sure my whole body understands what we're here to accomplish. Uh, Real proud of the Napa Chevy. It's running great. It's handling good. I believe that's going to give me some some options as the day goes along. Hopefully, keep our car out front. That's where it's got to be to to have any fun here. Now, this must give you a chance to maybe look ahead and forecast near the end of the race what you want to try to accomplish here, as far as where you need to put yourself in position to try to make that move. And that's what it's all about, just pos pos positioning yourself for the end of the race. Fortunately for me, Artie Kepner is just doing an unbelievable job directing the race, race broadcast. Are you watching the backstretch jumbotrons too? Yeah, and he's timing it to where when I come off turn two during the caution, I can look up and see all the replays of the accidents and things that are going on. So good job, Artie. We're down here in the pits just enjoying a piece of Domino's pizza and a Coca-Cola, relaxing, ready for this great American race to resume. Um, I thank God for the honor to get to drive for this team. It's so fun to have these great Napa guys behind me. Well, the DEI contingent, they're having fun on the racetrack. Now let's check in with their counterparts in the Chevy camp, the RCR boys with Dr. Dick Bergman. Dick? Thanks, Matty. Kevin Harvick started all the way in the back of the pack today as a result of an engine change. When you change motors, you've got to start all the way in the back of the pack. But you're all the way up to eighth. What's it like out there passing all those cars? Well, it's uh, pretty cool uh, when you get to see the start of the race and everybody going every which way. But uh, Jim Goodwin's car was... Uh, Really good uh, all throughout Speed Weeks, and it's still good here on Sunday. So our old uh, rubber head next to us got uh, our pit partner here kind of screwed us up. Oh, rubber head, define that. Well, rubber made, rubber head, whatever. 97, Kurt Busch. Whatever you want to call him. Uh, he screwed us up on the first pit stop. He was in our pit stall again. So uh, that got us a little bit back behind, uh, and we made it up again. So we'll just uh, keep going and keep the fenders on it, and we'll be fine. The DEI guys claim they can watch television while this race is underway. How about you? Tell them to keep watching because the 29's coming. <laughs> like that kind of talk, Kevin. Mike Joy. The rain stopped. They are drying the track here in Daytona. Drivers get a chance to debrief with their crews as the jet dryers are on the speedway, getting things dried off. We're joined by the Grand Marshal 
for the 45th Daytona 500 who is John Travolta and Larry when it's time to film the DW story do you see the resemblance here <laughs> it's like your resemblance how about that I tell you one thing I love the way you said gentlemen start your engine yeah got some action to well, it Well, thank you well Mar Mariah Carey inspired me she sang that so beautifully that I had energy in my body and I just had to do it oh you did it I mean a lot of people say gentlemen start your but you were into it I was into it and just like that wreck there I know what you'd have been hollering. Where's the stunt man? <laughs> I mean, you, you look, you look like you kidding. were into it to the fact that, uh, are you a NASCAR fan? I used to live in Daytona Beach. I'd come here all the time, and uh, I'm coming back. I'm moving back. So, uh, yeah, I am a fan. And uh, a couple of race uh, drivers are my neighbors and uh, friends. So, yeah, I am. Well, you live over in Spruce Creek? I used to. And, or uh, uh, maybe we ought not say that. Maybe well, that's right. I don't live there anymore, but I'm going to oh. move to Ocala. So, yeah. Yeah. Got anything uh, cooking? We got any new movies? I do. I got out? a new movie called Basic. I didn't make it rain to promote no, no, the movie. No. <laughs> I promise you that. Hey, we are shamelessly commercial. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a military thriller. Uh, it's excellent. Very well crafted movie. I love it. And um, I play an investigator and Sam Jackson, the guy I did Pulp Fiction with. Yeah. He's in it with me. Yeah. And uh, it's it's terrific. You've had a chance to be around a lot of sports and in study for your roles, a lot of fast action things. How does this compare? Oh well, that. I was in the um, pace car, and I looked back, and that was as exciting as it gets. The only thing more exciting would be to be in a race car itself, which I did. I hold the Didn't record you? as a celebrity at that amateur race <laughs> in Orlando, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so that was pretty good. Uh, but um, I fly jets, you know. I fly at 600 miles an hour. Do you really? Yeah. So I'm very used to speed, and I got up to 130 uh, miles an hour in the car, and I was just ready to go. I was ready to break ground and get 600. Well, you can see these cars will lift off. Yes, they will. <laughs> get them in the wrong position, they will that lift off. <laughs> Fortunately, not often. Thanks for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. Day. Yeah. John Travolta, Thanks. Grand Marshal. Okay. Great job today. Oh, thank you very yes, much. Sir. Jeannie? Okay. Well, we should remember these are race car drivers. They are competitors on the track, but uh, they are friends first. Rusty Wallace taking the time to check on Ryan Newman's status. He finds that he's okay, so you've got a moment for us. Move to the back of the pack because of the little carburetor issue, and now you find yourself at 18th. A, a bit of a breather here to, to regroup and figure out where you go from here? Yeah, well, the car's running really, really good. It, I, they, I tell you what, I dropped the flag, and I went through the center, and I passed 28 cars in three laps. I told the guys, my God, it's four, I'm four laps in the race. I just got done passing a pole sitter. That thing's really running great. I'm real happy with it. Uh, I got, went to the bottom lane there after that tire change and got hung in the bottom behind a couple cars. But all in all, it's really handling good and running good, so I'm real happy with it. Now, you're getting used to all these pit stops. It, it seems like the race is going to be won and lost right there in the pits, regardless of what you guys do out on the track, because yeah. you have to stop so many times. There's a lot of stops. I'll tell you what, I don't know if I'm for that rule. You know, it's, you're, I think you're in the pits too much, to tell you the truth. But well, I don't, by the way, because like that's my stops? job, sure. Okay, well, then I'll, I'll stick with that. But uh, now, my car has been great. I'm real embarrassed about half the start in the back for my sponsors and my fans and stuff, but hopefully we made it back up. I think at one point we were back up to fifth. And I, again, the car's running great. And uh, the pit stops are a lot, no doubt about that. And it's, I think it's really coming down to a fuel mileage thing because we were one of the first guys on pit road. Then I looked in the mirror, they keep, then they started coming real quick. But now we know what our fuel burn is and what it's looking like and how many laps we can run. And now it's in the hands of Mother Nature. Thank you, Russell. Thank Steve? You. Thanks, Jeannie. We've caught up with Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy, we heard you earlier in the week in practice on the radio talking to Chad Canal saying the car's good but I want it to be, good, to be good enough to win are you there I think so the problem we've got now we've worked so hard to get the handling figured out now today the temperature's up and, and deep in the pack our car's been running hot um, you know hopefully we haven't puked any water out and we don't have anything to worry about but it's been been pretty warm and we've been pretty worried about it so uh, you know the car's been good I've learned a lot uh, through last year and even through the shootout the IROC event and the 125 is about you know how to use the traffic and, and to use the pushes that you get and how to set the passes up. So uh, I'm, I'm really excited, having a good time, looking forward to this engine cooling down so I can get up there and race a little bit. Jimmy, interesting pitch strategy on the last stop about lap 44. Uh, your teammate Jeff Gordon took gas only. You took four tires, some tape off the grill. What does that mean? Oh, well, you know, we, we knew we were going to have to stop and take the time to pull the tape. And, you know, we had a little discussion whether just to do fuel and tape or, or what, but we're trying to you know in a sense race to halfway is one way to look at it and this gets us outside of what everyone else is doing and I'm pretty sure when we go back to green here a lot of these guys are gonna have to come in and get four and we're heck we don't even need tires really I think we'll probably put two on but uh, we'll you know we'll, we should be in good shape so it's just a matter of the, you know what's working with your car the way the strategy is going and uh, you know right now we're in a little different cycle than everyone saw you and Jeff Gordon talking a moment ago uh, what notes were you comparing Really just trying to find out if, if my other teammates' cars are running as warm as mine is. Uh, Terry's is running really hot, but Joe's and Jeff's are fine. So it's kind of odd. We've got two cars over, not overheating, but running really warm, and the other two are fine. Uh, we're, we're a little dumbfounded on that. 
All right, Jimmy, best of luck once we get going. Let's go to Dick Bergeron. Thanks, Steve. Long Island Steve Park is one of the most popular drivers in this sport. How's your day going? Uh, it's going fair. It depends on the car. I mean, we're 29th right now, but uh, made a pit stop and uh, kind of couldn't get in the box, got run into about a non car and uh, kind of put a damper on our uh, pit stop. So we came out towards the back, but uh, it's no indication of how the Pennzoil Chevrolet is running. So uh, we've got a lot of racing left. Hopefully this, this wave will clear out and we'll get a chance to race and put that Pennzoil car up in top 10. You're talking about the pit stops. I went across the street just a little while ago, and I measured the uh, stalls in the shopping mall. And these pit stalls are almost twice as wide. They're 10 feet further uh, long than the others. Why is it so hard for some of these guys to get in and out of the pit stops? Uh, race fans at home, we got to remember that the, the pit road speed is 55 miles an hour. That's a speed limit on the highway. So you see the guys smoking, locking up brakes, coming into the pits because they're coming in so fast. I mean, they're coming in at probably 80, 90 miles an hour, slowing down to 55. And then the pit stall looks small at 55 miles an hour. So uh, it's hard to get in there. And then we have uh, guys that are coming in with the new fuel cells, coming in early, coming in late. As you're coming in, guys are leaving, and you're trying to get in your pit box, so it's like a traffic jam. So you want to try to keep the fenders on, the, on, on your race car and get in the pits and get your tires and gas and get back out there and do battle again. What do you do from here? Uh, go to the front. I mean, the main thing is, you know, we're 29th right now, and that's not where we want to be. So uh, the further we get forward, the more we have better drafting help. So, again, want to kind of pick our way up, be smart, get to the front, and uh, race them last 50 laps. Hey, guess what? The sun's out. Let's go to Maddie. Elliot Sadler started back in 60th. You've worked your way all the way up into second, but you're boxed in with a pair of Chevys. Yeah, that's the only bad thing, Matt. I tell you, this M&M's Ford Taurus is very fast, but in a pretty good dilemma right now. I know I cannot pull out at all to try to pass the eight because the 15 is going to go the other way. And in the meantime, he's also going to try to get by me to get back to the eight. So I uh, need to get some blue ovals up there and kind of help me out a little bit. But the car is really good, and Raymond's doing a great job first time calling the race, making some great calls and keeping me the track position I need. And so far, we're having a great day. And this is where a spotter comes in so handy because he can try to make deals upstairs, although deals aren't worth a whole lot. Yeah, that's right. I mean, Brett's doing a great job spotting and trying to get me help here and there. But one thing I've learned the first 63 laps of this race is the, the 15, the 8, the 24, and the 20, I think their bumpers are chained together or something. They just will not move away from each other. And, and that's good. I mean, you got to have teammates like that to work with. But uh, I just kind of want to squeeze in, you know, beside them a little bit, maybe take up some real estate to the end of the race. But we'll see what happens. They got my car handling great. It's good on the bottom or the top. So we'll just try to stay in line, stay in front of the big red, and hopefully be there at the end. Elliot Sadler has been there at the end in the past in the last three races here at Daytona, a second and a third to Chris Myers. All right, thanks very much. And uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr., our current leader, 63 laps in the Daytona 500 and a slight rain delay, but the sun is peeking through. The rain has stopped, and we hope to go racing again in the Great American Race. We'll be back live here on Fox in a moment. Welcome back live the Daytona 500 in a slight weather delay but they are drying out the track the rain has stopped and the fans anxious to get back to racing and that's what we plan to do from the Hollywood Hotel with Jeff Hammond I'm Chris Myers and uh, nice to have you with us and we heard earlier Dale Earnhardt Jr. your current leader how relaxed he is leading looking at the jumbotron to see what's going on watching Fox but coming into this race and his domination his late father the nickname the inter the intimidator certainly Little League can be the dominator the way he has handled this week. But you talked to some crew chiefs and drivers this morning that were a little annoyed about just people kind of handing him the trophy already. Chris, I went down to that garage area this morning. And I said, okay, guys, what you got for the eight car? A couple of them said nothing. But I did talk to several of them who came to me and said, we're trying to figure out a way how to beat this guy. And one of them was Michael McSwain, who's the crew chief on Bobby Labonte's car. He said, I'm not handing him nothing because as long as there's 500 miles and I've got a driver like Bobby Labonte, I'm not about to quit. And my driver's not about to quit. Now, for, unfortunately for those guys, they've had some problems already. But there's an attitude with several of the drivers and several of the crew chiefs that don't feel like it's because he's been strong all week that they want to roll over and play dead. And as, as a crew chief, I felt the same way. I always want to try to figure out a way how to beat these guys. And in 1989, Perfect example. We didn't have the fastest car. We figured out a strategy and we took them down. And that's what these guys got to do here today. Yeah, you had a pretty good driver that yeah, year too. But driver. Kevin Harvick has showed a little of that attitude earlier as well. And he, Richard Childers Racing, DEI, the rivalry and the talk continues. Uh, he, know how, he knows how to talk some smack for sure. And I think <laughs> when you come from 42nd and go up to 8th like he has, he's got a car that you've got to worry about and contend with. So as Kevin so aptly put it, you better be watching that 
big screen TV back on the back straightaway, guys, because I'm a coming. All right, the big screen, a guy like John Travolta, yeah. we heard from him earlier. He was up in the booth with the guys. He was the grand marshal that started the race. Mariah Carey singing the national anthem. All kinds of celebrities turning out for the Daytona 500. Uh, Steve Burns uh, ran into one of them earlier today here at the track. Steve? Well, Chris, as exciting as racing is here, television doesn't really do 31 degrees of banking justice. So when you have the greatest skateboarder in the history of the world, Tony Hawk, you bring him in. Now, Tony, what you do is obviously pretty extreme, but what do you think about the high banks here at Daytona? I had no idea, you know. You, you see this on TV, and it just looks like a sort of a bank turn, and when you get here, it's it's really steep. It's, it's a lot scarier than I thought. All right, up the bank and you go. Ah, uh, I got to start from the top? It seems so easy when someone called me about this, you know? <laughs> All right, now what kind of a ride was that at 31 degrees? Uh, it's a lot faster than I ever expected it to be. It was fun, though. Would it's you want it pretty smooth along the bottom. I thought that the where it meets the flat, it would be a little more kink, but it's all right. How about at 185 miles an hour? No, thanks. <laughs> Back to you, Chris. All right, thanks very much. I, I've seen Dick Berger do that on his red scooter. Yeah, I, I have, too. Tony, just... Tony Hawk could do a lot more, and actually, he'll, he'll be on The uh, Simpsons tonight on Fox. It's The Simpsons 300, the 300th episode starring one of the, uh, the biggest names in action sports, uh, Tony Hawk, and The Simpsons follows an episode of King of the Hill. And, of course, uh, Daytona 500 hopefully resuming after 63 laps. Let's go back for a moment, too. Uh, we heard Dick Bergman talking about uh, pit stops with a couple of the drivers, and you weren't necessarily buying that the rule change is causing problems for the pit crews. It just creates more of an opportunity for a problem. Yeah, I think what I want to point out here right now, folks, is that 13 and a half gallons or 22 gallons, when you're out of gas, you're out of gas. And first 42 of you still in the lead pack, you know, you still could have the same kind of problem. I think that they've got valid issues about where everybody's kind of responding to it or over responding to the fact that, you know, they've got to stop more times. Now, that could create a problem, but, you know, this is still, it's a 500 mile race. The number of accidents we've had have kind of broke things up. So, I mean, I wouldn't totally just lay it off on the 13 and a half gallon sales as far as what's happened here today. All right, and earlier we saw that uh, three car crash. Uh, you heard from Brian Newman. It involved Ken Schrader, Bobby Labonte. All three of the drivers are walking away, treated and checked out fine. Let's get out to Dick Bergman. He's with Bobby Labonte. Dick? And Bobby's sitting on a workbench here, staring at his bent race car. What happened out there, Bobby? Uh, the wreck happened out there in front of us. We came down pit road, got down the end of pit road, and I was to the inside of the few cars that were down there. I already told the guys, looked like I made it through there. And the 49 car came sliding across. I don't know if he's, he was in the wreck, I guess, and probably didn't have any brakes or steering and uh, centered him. You can see the disappointment in his face. His crew chief is Fatback McSwain. What are you going to have to do to fix this car and get it back on the racetrack? Yeah, we got to do a lot. The bad point is we got to wait till, uh, till the red flag goes away. We uh, got some body damage on the front, got a busted transmission, and we got to change the steering box. So we got a long, long day to go, and uh, it's really long when you're under red flag condition. It is, because all they can do is stare at the car. To Jeannie. Well, I asked Kenny Schrader, do you care whether we get the rest of this race in because now it's stopped running? And, and what'd you tell me? I said, of course I oh, care. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what you said. Well, I'm not maybe near as excited about it as I was, but, uh, you know, we had just had a decent run going. We had a good week down here. Scared the heck out of Carrot Top there, you know. And it, is this what happened? Did this happen when the, you, you got looked, the damage here? It looked normal before the wreck, uh -huh. you know, and then it just it scared the heck out of them. So, uh, Carrot Top never and, looks normal. We no, should just clear that up. We're going to load him up and uh, bring him back at Darlington. We're going to go to Rockingham without him, but uh, glad to have him back at Rock him. Just not the way we wanted uh, to have the day go. Now, you doing okay? Because I noticed there's like a chunk of sod over here. Did that come out of the car? Did that come out of you? Where is this from here? No, I, I just got a little bit of sod. I think Ryan Newman got most of it, but uh, just glad to see Ryan's okay yes. and uh, everybody's all right. all right. Just bad day for a lot of people. Well, I'm glad to see that uh, we can stand here and joke and that you're doing okay as well. Oh, We're fine. Just wish we got there. Look around. All right, Steve. With Sterling Marlin, is Sterling listed as 11th right now? How's that Coors Light Dodge? <laughs> Edmund Bay, it's, uh, it's running pretty good. good. They're making fun back here. Look what Jamie's doing. What's, what's he doing? He's making faces at us. <laughs> <laughs> it's been pretty good. We've uh, been up to 7th and back to probably 15th, back up to 11th. And uh, 
He's driving pretty good. Got a little bit tight one time. Never had to lift. But uh, a lot of guys, you look like the longer we run, the, the worse their cars got handling. So uh, just shake it out. See here. Hopefully we get to 40, 45 laps in and uh, at least get halfway. They say it's going to rain for 12 hours once it gets here. So uh, you hope we can uh, get the car adjusted a little better and get on up front. Sterling, you have led more races here, 25, than any other driver. Did the math. You've led about 1,400 miles. What is it about this big super speedway that you like so much? I don't know. I didn't know that. It's pretty good research, isn't it? Pretty good. I, I just always enjoyed racing here. It's a fun track and uh, have a good time doing it. I just wish we could run about 195, 98, and uh, we wouldn't be worrying about blocking each other. We'd be trying to use all the racetrack up coming up off the corners. But, you know, we're not. We're just stuck with what we got now, and uh, we just say what we got. Uh, I got to throw it to Matt Yoakum. Should I throw it as Steve or as Sterling? Steve Sterling. All right. Well, Matt, uh, Sterling's pretty good. You know, uh, I don't know uh, who you got. Well, I think we will talk to his teammate, Steve. Thank you. Jimmy McMurray. First off, you were just telling Sterling what a great teammate he is, a little sign for him. Just uh, Sterling is the king of, of playing pranks on people, so. Oh, come on. I was just trying to get one ahead of him right now. He'll get me back. Well, you started 19th. How has your day gone? Not according to the plan you'd hoped for? Well, in the bush race yesterday, the bottom was really good. And I was behind Ward Burton, and I thought, I'm just going to ride on the bottom, so I started down there. And uh, they got two wide, and then they got three wide, and I looked up, and I was dead last after a little while. So the car was really tight at the beginning, but they've adjusted on it and have made it a lot better. So I feel like we'll be able to work our way back up. But Chip told me just before I got in here, he said, man, don't wreck and don't do anything stupid. He said, you know, just ride around for 400 miles, try to stay with them. And he said, then the race the last 100. So just trying to listen to my car owner. That's the best thing to do, especially when he's paying your salary. <laughs> to Chris Myers. All right, thanks, Matt. And uh, Jamie McMurray, one of five rookies in today's Daytona 500, one of six drivers who are in their first Daytona 500. And in a rain delay, but it has stopped raining. And uh, we hope to get going again. Somebody wake him up. There's racing on Fox coming your way here in a moment. Welcome back live to Daytona. Thanks for spending your afternoon here on Fox and hoping to get racing again. You see it's a little wet there, but the rain has stopped and the dryers are out on the track. Dale Earnhardt Jr. currently leading. Tony Stewart currently fourth. Let's go to Dick Bergman to talk with Tony. Dick? Well, Tony, car looks awful good. How's it feel? It's not bad right now. Humvee Bill Chevrolet is um, it's definitely running real good right now. I mean, we're staying with the 8 and the 15 and uh, got some really good partners up there right now. So uh, we just got to stay up there. I mean, we got a really good car. It's, uh, it's just real early. I mean, we're just trying to be patient and uh, stay in line with guys, and we're all working together real good. And there's some there's some guys that are in a big hurry and on a mission to get up there and try to lead a lap, I guess. So uh, we're just trying to hold those guys off and stay with the partners we got. Are you having conversation with hand gestures with those guys? You're working with spotters, or do they just know how fast you are, and as a result, the three of you are working together? Uh, I mean, Junior and I always work real good together on the circuit play tracks. So, uh, you know, we always plan on working together. but. Uh, you know, Mikey and him have run real well together. Mikey and I have run real well together here at Daytona last year in the 125. So, uh, you know, the three of us know what we got. It's just a matter of protecting it right now. A bunch of people are talking about running hot, engines running hot. How's yours? We've been warm at times, but, uh, you know, all I got to do is peek the nose down a little bit and get a little fresh air and give it a gulp of, of good cool air, and it's, uh, it brings the temperature right back down. So we're, we don't have too many problems there. Okay, good for you. Nice to see you running so well today. Thanks, Dick. And uh, Tony, moments ago, you heard uh, Michael McSwain, crew chief for the 18 car Bobby Labonte, uh, affectionately known as uh, Fatback uh, McSwain, talking about the uh, transmission uh, problems and that issue. Let's go down to Jeff Hammond from the Hollywood Hotel. He's in our valet parking area and the Ford cutaway car for a clear illustration and explanation of that. Jeff? Yeah, just a second ago, Michael McSwain was talking about he's got to change the steering box on Bobby Labonte's car. Right here is the steering box. It's located, it's held on by four bolts. We'll have to disconnect the four bolts from there, as well as the steering column, which the, steer, uh, the steering column goes up, and that's where the steering wheel is connected to that the driver holds on to, as well as the pitman arm down on the bottom. That's a relatively easily change, except the fact they've got to also disconnect all the power steering lines that go along with that. Once they get that accomplished, then they can hook everything back up and make sure they prime the pump and everything so they have power steering that will operate uh, the drivability of the car once again for Bobby Labonte. The other item he's got to change is the transmission. Now, on our cutaway engine here, this is where the transmission is located. This is the bell housing. This is the transmission. They'll remove these four bolts on the, that are connected to the bell housing, as well as there's a transmission support back here. They'll disconnect that and the dry shaft that connects the rear end housing to the dry, transmission. They'll remove it. Then they'll take and this is uh, a little bit of over-exaggeration, but they'll take and pull that transmission back away from the engine. They'll replace it 
then slide it back up in there, make it line back up, hook everything back up, and hopefully they'll get Bobby Labonte back on the racetrack and give, a, give him an opportunity to save some valuable championship points before the day's over with. Mike? Thanks, Jeff. While under a caution for Ryan Newman's crash, Rain fell and it rained hard here in Daytona Beach. We've been under the red flag for rain now for 43 minutes. But the track is just about dry and ready for racing. They still have some work to do on pit road because that area is still very wet. And we've seen how tough it is to get in and out of the pit safely uh, when it's dry, let alone when it's wet. But we're making good progress toward getting this race back underway soon. Let's take a look back at the stock car portion of Speed Weeks 2003, the centennial of speed in Daytona. They've been racing on the sands here since 1903. But they rolled into that tunnel and got ready to race. Here's Chad Kadaus taking Jimmy Johnson's car through Winston Cup inspection. How's that? That's perfect. What we need is open this area up in here. We can have them here, but we can't have that. Yeah, good. Saturday night, first time in prime time, but shootout. Dale Earnhardt Jr. got his first checkered flag of this speed week. Rain canceled qualifying in the ARCA race on Sunday. But come Monday, Jr. knocked his DEI teammate Michael Waltrip off the pole for the 500. And less than one minute later, was displaced from the front spot by Jeff Green. In practice, Jack Sprague bumps Mike Skinner for car crash. Qualifying for the Coolers 300 Bush race, front row Joe Nemechek took the bowl. Then Robbie Gordon on Thursday won the first 125 mile qualifier. Uh, no signal left turn by Kurt Busch. Frank us on pit road in the second race. Dale Earnhardt Jr. to victory lane for the second time this week. Johnny Benson used up the right side of his car Friday in Winston Cup practice. And look at the finish of the Craftsman truck race. Rick Crawford, the old fashioned Daytona slingshot to win it coming off turn four. But in practice for the Bush race, Kerry Earnhardt crashes hard. Saturday, Junior again. For his co car owner, Teresa Earnhardt, victory lane in the Coolers 300. Three checkered flags for the Prince of Speed Week. Only Fireball Roberts in 1962 has won more races in Daytona Speed Week. He took the race for the pole, the all star race, the 100 mile qualifier, won the sportsman race and the 500. That's the only time it's been done. Welcome back to Daytona. Mike Joy with Larry McReynolds and Darrell Waltrip. And Darrell, we're getting a lot of gray in the racetrack. The water getting out of it. We're getting close to going racing again. Oh, they're doing a wonderful job of drying the track. And the track was hot. And if that caution had to come out, and those cars had kept going, and that vortex had kept spinning, I don't think it'd ever rain. I believe. Do you believe? Keeping that heat in the air keeps it, oh, keeps that cloud away from the racetrack. I believe. It really does. But I want to see, here's what I want to see. I mean, Dale Jr.'s up there leading the race, and Michael's been up there. I want to see Kevin Harvick get up there. And I want to see Elliot Sadler get up there because they won't ride. They will mix it up. They will mix it up. And that's what we need is somebody to get up there and say, look, Dale Jr., I can pass you. And that's going to put, that's going to make him think a little bit more about what he's doing. I bet he'll quit watching TV. And start watching his mirror. Last uh, yesterday in the 300 mile race, we saw only one lead change. But as expected, behind the leader single file, they're racing all over the place. And yeah. we've seen that again today. I mean, I heard Michael say, and I've heard Dale Jr. say, it is hard to pass the leader. You can get to the leader, but you can't pass him, even with help. And the thing that's really making it difficult is the outside line going up to the high side and trying to get a run on somebody, it just didn't work. And you got to ride right around the inside, and you've got that yellow line there to protect anyone from going below you. So the guy on the inside leading the race, he's dictating what everybody else is going to do. So a lot of the racing for position, Larry, has been coming in and getting out of the pits. I mean, that's the thing. I don't want to take anything away from Dale Earnhardt Jr. and his Bush effort or DEI, but the races that he won earlier in the week were short races. The Bud shootout, you had the one pit stop when he won the 125-miler one pit stop. Even yesterday in the Bush Series race, since they still run the 22-gallon fuel cells, there was only two or three stops. We still have about six or seven pit wow. stops to go, and we've already seen what a mistake on pit road by Jeff Burton's crew can do to a good effort. So. A Again, yeah, Dell Jr.'s got to get be on his game on that racetrack, but that pit crew and the calls that Tony Uri Sr. makes, they have to be on their game on pit road. So what about the small fuel cell, Darrell? Well, I'd like to go down in the uh, cutaway car area. I think Jeff's down there and just show you the two different sizes of the small cell 13 gallon and the, and the one we did run the 22 gallon. And I want to talk about a problem that some of the guys telling me, telling me they're having. 
we have 11 gallon dump cans and it and, and with 11 gallon dump can when the fuel cell is empty you put 11 gallon in the fuel cells almost full the 13 gallon is when you go with the other 11 gallon it won't go in because there's too much pressure forcing it in the cell and you can't get it full so we need to do one of two things i believe and that's where i wanted to get jeff's opinion and larry's too we either need to have two smaller cans so that you can put two cans of fuel in the car or else one 13 gallon uh, dump can so you only have to put one can of fuel in it what do you think guys well jeff <laughs> you know when you're down there to cut away car you're looking at a dump can right here that's something that nascar has been on hard this week is mandating what these guys are doing with dump cans. They don't really say, a lot like the fuel cell, they don't say it has to hold a certain amount of fuel. They have a dimension sheet for that dump can. And there was guys running around hunting fuel dump cans, Jeff, because all of their cans were too big. Now, Daryl, you ought to know better. A 13 gallon dump can, they used to exist, but we used to have a couple of them ourselves. But <laughs> as Larry was alluding to, NASCAR that's why, cracked that's, down. That's why I asked you. <laughs> NASCAR cracked down and said, guys, go back to our dimensions, 11 gallons is all we're going to carry on these cans. But you've got an interesting thought process there, my friend, because again, if you want to make the pit stops and make all this here kind of work, I think that with the intent that NASCAR has come up with, you need to go to two cans. This is the 13 and a half gallon cell that everybody's got in right now. This is the bladder that goes inside the can. This is the bladder that's 22 gallons right in behind it. You can see it's quite a bit of uh, difference between the two, obviously because of the different uh, size that it holds. Now, the interesting part about it is you still have to come in and put fuel in this thing. When you're trying to dump 11 gallons, and Daryl was talking about when you go back and grab the other dump can and you try to put it in there, is it creating a problem? It could be, could be. This is what you do. This is the probe that fuels the fuel cell itself. The guy comes in, he pushes this probe in, Fuel flows through here down inside the fuel cell itself. And then once it's full, it has to come out what I call this overflow. It comes out this overflow. This is the check valve that the guy catches the overflow in right behind here. Now, what it does, the fuel, cells, fuel cell itself is sitting right down inside here. You can see inside here. I'm going to open the deck so we can see a little bit better. It's coming here. Now, our car right now is still set up for Rockingham, unfortunately, but this right here is a 22-gallon cell, but this is where it sits in the back of the race car. These guys now are carrying 13 and a half gallons, but when the fuel cell, when it gets full, it overflows out through this tube. We've already seen when Larry's talking about mistakes on pit road, this is one of the places that one guy has already had a problem. That was Jeff Burton. The overflow can got caught in this check valve that's inside this hose area. Again, you've got to eliminate mistakes. It is what part of the game is today, Daryl. The guys have got what they've got and maybe trying to figure out whether they need to go to smaller dump cans may be a good idea whenever you come back down pit road next time and the exchange and everything, maybe they need to go to an opportunity to go to maybe the six and a half or seven gallon can dump cam so they can fill this thing up a little more reasonably. Well, an 11 gallon dump can full already weighs about 80 pounds. I'm not sure adding more weight to that fueler uh, is going to be the best thing. I like the two can solution. I think for here we should have two smaller cans. That way when you fill the cell, fill the cell up, you get the first can in your cells half full, then the other can will go in a lot easier. Huh? Drivers are being called to their cars, and a big cheer went up from this crowd when that announcement was made. And just real quickly, again, the sun's out and they are headed to the cars. I talked to John Darby, competition director, and he said one reason they were really cracking down on the size of these dump cans is they didn't want teams to have a can that would fill that 13 and a half gallon cell because what does that do? That puts the pressure on the tire changer to even be quicker, and that's when you have more of a chance of a mistake with loose lug nuts on pit road. Next weekend, the scene shifts to Rockingham for another full weekend of racing action. Friday, Bush Series qualifying on speed, followed by Winston Cup qualifying on Fox Sports Net. Dale Earnhardt Jr. inserts the earplugs, puts on the helmet, and gets ready to climb back aboard. He's our leader after 63 laps of the 45th annual Daytona 500. 37 laps shy of halfway as Dale Jarrett straps in. 137 laps from the finish. What I like about this is now you've had a chance to go talk to your crew chief, talk to other drivers. I think we'll see a better race. I think these guys will come back out now pumped up. They make changes to their cars, and uh, I think we're going to see some real racing. And the crew chiefs have had about an hour or so to think about their strategy on this pit stop right here. You heard Elliot Sadler talk about it. You heard Jimmy Johnson. Even though we were under six laps of caution, pit road was closed because of the wreck at the end of pit road with Kenny Schrader and Bobby Labonte. Nobody could pit. Jerry Nadeau about to get back aboard and get going. There's Jamie McMurray who won 
a race in relief of Sterling Marlin toward the end of last year. Yeah, over at Charlotte, he just really took off there at the end of the day and won that sucker. Now comes here as a rookie candidate and the defending Winston Cup champ, Tony Stewart. Last year, the first driver to fall out of the 500, but his team rebounded quickly, came back, and won the national championship. And it takes a while to rebound from a last place finish at Daytona. I mean, it can take two or three months. That's what Ryan Newman and the 12 group's going to be up against being dead last after their wreck. Uh, just, it takes a while. You fall in a hole, you crawl out of it. I mean, it takes forever. Race notes up in our Fox box. Michael Waltrip led the first 34 laps of this race. And you'll see notes like that throughout the day to help keep you updated on where your favorite driver has been today. And that's neat. I mean, we try our best to go back and talk about your favorite driver, but we obviously can't talk about all of them. So that way, if one of them's had a problem, you'll see it up there in the update box. Our post setter, Jeff Green, is sitting there uh, talking on his cell phone. I guess he was calling home to see how he looked on television. Chiefs are the ones that's going to have to agree on that because as long as those two cars are up running at the front, I think it's important that they stay on the same strategy. That way they can leave pit road together. I guess, Larry, I mean, I, maybe I'm old school. That's what Michael tells me all the time. But I always thought that under the caution, I wanted to take four because that's when I have the least amount. That's when I have the most time the cars are running under caution. Under green, I want to take two, a four under caution. So under green, I have the option of not taking any or taking two. I don't want to get myself in a box where I got to put tires on my car when I come down to pit road under green. But I see Michael's point too. Track position is so important to be up in the front pack. If everybody gets four tires in the pits, it's a real cluster trying to get out and maintain track position. If you just get two under that caution, you can stay up front. And if he's got a good enough car to get four under green, he's got a really good car. But I, I tell you, if you're running in a pack in the draft and you take four tires and the other guys only take two under green, you're going to be way behind. You're going to have to chase them down. Or I like what he and uh, Dale Jr. did the other day in the qualifying races. They took no tires. Right. And, and so I, I just think that you give yourself so many more options under green when you got to do it quick if you do everything that you can under caution. And what we need to make the fans understand, unlike next week at Rockingham, it's not that four tires here at Daytona make you faster. It just makes the driver where he can maneuver the car. They're just going to have better grip. Yeah, you can hold the car wide open when you got four fresh tires on it. You saw Ricky Rudd, who's been coming here for two decades trying to win the 500. Maybe today is the day for the Chesapeake, Virginia driver. Steve Park from Long Island. And there's Rudd making sure he's comfortable and has everything he needs to go the distance here. Jeff Gordon. Now it's a struggle to get that window net strapped in. Daryl, ex explain why. Yeah, well, we run these things. They're so tight because you do not want that thing to be, if you get in a wreck like Ryan Newman did, you want that to be fiddle string tight so that you don't get an arm or anything outside of it. They fit, see how I think just fits right up against the body and all these pieces where it hooks and everything. It's really, really strong. And the driver, I, I told Sterling last year, I know you got out and pulled on your fender, but I don't know how you got your window net and all your paraphernalia <laughs> back up. And he said, I didn't think I was going to be able to do it. Wow. He said, I gave it three tries and on the third one, I said, this is it, or I'm going to have to go to the pits and get the window net put in. And from a performance standpoint, the more you can make that thing think it's a solid piece, exactly. it reduces the drag on that car, lets less air go in the car. Bill Elliott, two-time winner of the 500 getting set to go. Let's go to Chris Myers for a visa race break. All right, now let's uh, recap, recap the uh, Great American Race, which started a little bit early because of threatening weather, so they moved up the start time. And on lap 36, gas can problems, causing a penalty in and out of the pit. Lap 42, Bobby Labonte, it's the green car, the 18 car, spins out and it created the first caution. He, he was went, okay. He was very lucky right there, Chris. He could have for his race car, but he did. All right, everybody lucky here too. Ryan Newman in the 12 car along with Kenny Schrader and Labonte involved. And Newman amazingly survived this, walks away. In fact, all three drivers involved were unhurt. 
And there is Ryan Newman, who is out of this race. And on lap 64, the reins came with the Dale Earnhardt Jr. leading. Elliot Sadler currently running second. And Michael Waltrip running third. Also in a DEI car along with a little E. Back with Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers in the Hollywood Hotel just above Victory Lane. And this is a Visa race break in between the weather. And will this affect the strategy in terms of, hey, do we race to 100 laps to make this official? We're on the 64th lap. Or do we just take our time as if this was a 500-mile race? No, I think with the way the weather is right now, Chris, you've got to take chances and go ahead and throw that four-tire stop in there like Michael and Lily were talking about. Get in there, try to get it up there past halfway, and put yourself in the best position so that if it does go further, then you can start opting for two tires. Now's the time to go ahead and get in that kind of position because we're not halfway. we got about 37 laps before we get there, and I think that's where the real race is going to be. We've seen terrific teamwork, obviously, with the DEI guys with Little E and Michael Waltrip. Who stands the best chance of giving them a challenge, and will they have the right kind of help? Well, we've kind of seen already, I think, where Elliot Sadler has been pretty strong. If somebody can work with Elliot, like a Kevin Harvick who's been coming up through the pack and told everybody, hey, I'm coming. If those two guys can get together and if their cars will work with you, work together, he may be a factor before the day's over with. He could ruin these guys. He could basically have it rain on their parade. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, uh, and the trash talk, if you want to call it that, all week with uh, Richard Childress Racing and, and DEI, I mean, it's looking like uh, they're going to have a lot to say about who winds up, whether this goes uh, 500 miles or just the 100 laps plus when this becomes an official race. Right, and, and one of the other guys we've kind of left out of the, the mix as far as DEI is concerned, we're looking at Steve Park, and, and he said his car was pretty good, and if he could get back up there, he may also be able to help his teammates. So when you're making all this strategy play, You've got to look at maybe Michael and Little Lee trying to get hooked up back here in the back, doing the same thing on pit road, or the 29 car and the 38 car hooking up together. All these things are going to start playing out. I'm sure there's a lot of deals being made right now on pit road. Kevin Harvick during the rain delay uh, talking big. There's the uh, pole sitter, Jeff Green. So something to look for as we resume action here, getting ready to go. Want to be a grand marshal at a Winston Cup race? Introducing the uh, Via NASCAR Grand Marshal for a Day contest here and tune into the first hour of each of Boxes or FX's 2003 Winston Cup races. Look for the secret number on the animated car. Then log on to FoxSports.com on Lycos and enter the secret number for your chance to win. Wave the checkered flag next year at Rockingham. Possibly if you turn out to be the lucky one. The Via NASCAR Grand Marshal for a Day contest begins Sunday right here on Fox. And we're getting ready to go racing as you get a look at the drivers and their crews. Track looks dry and uh, pit road looks uh, dry as well. Yeah, everything right now. Is That's our really Fox good. fly cam, by the that, way. Which is that not cool? Racing. That is one of the neatest things I've seen in a long time. That, that camera come down pit road has really given us a different perspective. Well, and things. more into play when you, you, you know, guys come in there at 55 mm -hmm. miles per hour and try to get in and out of there. We've already had a lot of adventure in the bush race, and uh, there's a, a look at the look of the camera. Yeah, that, yeah. Is, that camera's waving talking at us. to Yes, yeah, waving at us. That looks like, yeah. uh, let's see. Hey, do you think Daryl Walker's very smart? Uh, All right. Yes. See the guys? Okay, that works pretty good. Oh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know how smart that uh, fly camera is, but it gives us great pictures, and that's the important thing. Very smart. I think it's stuck in that mode right now, Chris, where I should have asked you something that had to be a yes question. But yeah. <laughs> you could. <laughs> you could have uh, set them up. Uh, uh, Jeff, just uh, uh, no. again, uh, uh, the, the drivers, in the, it, when they come into the pits, in terms of uh, how they could be cautious, but obviously time of the essence getting in and getting out of there. Time is of the essence, but more importantly, you've got to be careful coming down pit road and getting in and out of your pit box because if you damage your race car, no matter how much time you give up on the racetrack, that could hurt you a lot worse. I mean, right. you don't want to knock the front end fenders in or the quarter panels in. Take your time, be smooth, get in and out. If you've got a good race car, you can pass the guys that beat you off pit road. All right, a Daytona 500 has never been rained out, and I think we caught a break here. Uh, we started a little bit early. We had the rain delay, but we're getting ready to uh, get racing and crank it up and should have an exciting finish again with Dale Earnhardt Jr. leading the way. Let's go back upstairs to Larry McReynolds, Mike Joy, and Darrell Walter. At the front of that line is Dale Earnhardt Jr. who started this race on the outside pole. Six times the Daytona 500 has been won from the outside pole. Fifteen times from the front row. Our pole sitter Jeff Green is at the opposite end of that train. He'll restart last car on the lead lap. He was caught up in part of the accident between Ken Schrader and Ryan Newman and Ward Burton. They've had to pit to make repairs, so he'll be the tail gunner on this restart. Yeah, again, we talked about pit road being closed. Those two cars came to pit road several times while pit road was closed, and the penalty is when you restart the race, you have to start at the tail end of the longest line, so that's what will happen to Ward Burton and Jeff Green. 
Drivers are in their cars awaiting the restart of the Daytona 500 after a red flag but so far been an hour and five minutes. Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s crew on the run toward that lead car. How come, Matt? The car will not fire. Jake Winery ran a battery down there. Tony Uri Jr. is running down there. A number of crew members from the Bud Guys are running down to see if they can help Dale Earnhardt Jr. A wrecker is making its way to the front of the grid. Trying to give it a little push and bump start it there. And I mean, we, we talk about this all the time, Daryl. You know, to win the Daytona 500, you got to have a good race car. You can't make any mistakes, but you know what? You got to have luck on your side, too. Yeah, and this is unfortunate. Uh, looks like the battery's dead. Maybe he left something on when he got out of the car. Maybe he left something on. CD player? <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> Yeah, this is not the kind of bump drafting that you want to see. Boy, and you know, when you've had such a perfect week, you're just waiting for the shoe to drop. You know, you just kind of walk around saying, man, what can go wrong? It's been too good. All right, you know, it, to change the battery, it's not a big, big deal. It's located in front of the left rear tire. We're going to show you our animation right here. What you have to do, take left rear tire off. There's the battery right there. You take that little aluminum door off. This is a quick disconnect. You just slide it apart. It's a marine di quick disconnect. Slide the old battery out, slide the new one in, connect it back up, slide the other one in, quick disconnect, put the door back on, put the tire on. I mean, you can do it in a, in a matter of seconds if you have to. Oh yeah, we've, we've done it and never lost a lap. And the procedure that has been in place is that should a car require a push to restart on a red flag, that is legal. And he should not forfeit his position, Matt. Go ahead, get up, find the pace car. Mike, the problem for Dale Earnhardt Jr. is simple. He forgot to turn on the main power switch. That's why it wouldn't fire. Got to turn everything on to make it work. And what these cars have, they have a master switch that t cuts the, all the power off to the battery. And the reason they have that, one, it's a safety issue in case a car has a fire. Also, when you the car's sitting overnight in the garage area, you cut it off as well. Jeff Green still trying to get repairs made from the crash coming out of turn four. Dick Bergman? I took a walk around the car, Mike, and the car really isn't bad, but there's some minor sheet metal damage. On the other hand, at 185, 190 miles an hour, minor sheet da metal damage can really slow a race car down. So they're going to take their time here on pit road and get the car back uh, as good as they possibly can. Yeah, and it's, right now is the right time to work on it. Man, don't wait till later on. You got the car. We're under caution here. Work on it now. Get it back perfect, and it'll run better. Now, the pits were not open, but since Green was already at the tail end of the longest line, he'll serve no further penalty. Smart move because that just gives them that much more time to work on. Very smart. In the garage, work resumes on Bobby Labonte's car, trying to get him back onto the speedway after being involved in a crash with Ryan Newman, Ken Schrader, and Ward Burton that has brought the race under its second caution of the day and the red flag. Now that's just pit road that's open, that green flag. The race is not back under green, but pit road is open and virtually everyone will be there. Again, I think you'll see a lot of people changing just two tires. You may see just some fuel only, just trying to get that track position. I think there's some guys that like to say, man, I wish if I could get in front of that eight car, maybe I could hold him off. The only way they're going to do it is just their best opportunity. Matt? Well, the game plan for Dale Earnhardt Jr. is simple. They're on the two-tire rotation. The last time they took on lefts, they're going to take on rights this time. His last stop, those two tires have to go from third to first. To Steve. Dick Jeff Gordon in his pit box. Crew chief Robbie Loomis says, nice and easy, boys. Right side tires of gas. And Gordon is away right in front of Sterling Marlin. A lot of congestion, but hardly any contact as cars come on and off pit road. If you beat a car off pit road, you are able to improve your position there. Otherwise, there's no passing under the caution flag. So this will jumble the field slightly among the 38 cars that are on the lead lap. 64 laps complete. We're getting ready to go back to racing in the Daytona 500 on Fox. Under caution, the Daytona 500 now 65 laps complete. Late pit stops for Mike Skinner, John Andretti, and Jeff Green. And the field will form up behind 
Casey Mears, a rookie, leads the Daytona 500. No rookie has ever won the race. And the former winner from last year is right behind him. First time we've seen him up there near the front today. Ward Burton. And we've been showing you our fuel gauges when they've been getting uh, empty. Now everybody has pitted. There's Casey Mears, there's Ward Burton, there's Michael Waltrip. Nice full tanks. Now, Michael Waltrip, he won the battle off pit road of the cars that pitted because he took fuel only, no tires. His teammate, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Tony Stewart, in the 20 as well, took two right side tires. Michael Waltrip, third. Leading our Coca-Cola racing family, Tony Stewart, the Winston Cup champ, and Harvick all yep. in the top ten. Now, Casey Mears, who was leading the race, he comes to pit road, but he got those five bonus points. Ward Burton, he also came to pit road. Second page, Bobby Labonte's car in the garage, under repair. Out of the race, Ken Schrader and Ryan Newman. Everybody else on track and on the lead lap, except for John Andretti and Christian Fittipaldi, both of whom are a lap down. Jeff? Mike, what I think I'm seeing right here, as far as Ward Burton and the 41 car Casey Mears are concerned, Several of the Dodge team told me they were concerned about being able to go 35 or 36 laps like several other cars possibly could. So for these guys, they may be coming down pit road to be able to make that magic halfway point in the event of, a, of a rain does come back. This might be the only way they can reach the halfway point. Well, and Jeff Ward Burton, I think he was staying out there just for that to go ahead and run some of these cautions before he come to pit road. Remember, though, he was he was making pit stops when pit road was closed, so he was going to have to start at the tail end anyhow. So he was just letting some of these caution laps wind down. All right, Mr. Weather Channel, let's have a look. We've had a hard shower here that put us under the red flag for one hour and eight minutes. And we're in the window, Larry. I mean, here's Daytona Beach. Here's our weather moving this way. We just need to get this race started and get going. We need, we need to get that vortex going, DW. I'm telling you, I've been doing this for a long time. It works. Now, I think people laugh at me all the time. Because there's that, there's those 12 hours of rain Sterling Marlin was talking about all the way across the state. But you know what? They're doubled up. I think we're going to go racing. I'm a, I'm a believer in the vortex. There's a lot of theories in racing people don't understand. That's one of them. Aerial coverage courtesy of Budweiser. Fans back in the stands, cars back on track. We're set to restart the Daytona 500 after the second caution of the day. The first at lap 42 for Bobby Labonte's spin. The second, lap 58, Ryan Newman's crash with Schrader and Bobby Labonte. Red flag at lap 64. We're going to begin lap 68, Daryl. Green flag. We're back to racing. Oh, look at him, look at him, look at him again. I see the two cars on the inside. Christian Fittipaldi in the 33, John Andretti in the 43. They are. Boogity day. Now, the one thing this cooler weather has done, along with the clouds, it has cooled the track temperature down about 13 to 15 degrees from the start of the race. That just gives these cars more grip around the racetrack. Make those old engines run better, too, and they'll sound louder, so we should. We boogity twice. What haven't we done yet today? Hey, let's strap those television down and crank it up. losing volts. It went from 10.8 now down to 10. 
I mean, these cars have a charging system very similar to a pasture car alternator system or charging system. Maybe a 70 amp alternator in DW. The only thing you can do right here, especially while we're green flag racing, is start cutting some of the electrical things off, like the blower that cools the rear end. And unfortunately, DW, you need to cut that blower off of that helmet that cools you down. Yeah, I know. I, I hate to hear that. Two laps ago, Robbie Gordon up here on the outside was just ahead of his teammate Kevin Harvick. Gordon swung up the racetrack. Harvick got caught in the middle and he got passed on both sides. Now he's ducking underneath his teammate Gordon, trying to get out in front of him so as not to be caught in that circumstance again. Dick Bergman, does Elliot Sadler have a problem? Well, Elliot Sadler had a problem, Mike. He had one of those electrical boxes go bad on him when the race restarted. He switched boxes and said the car is okay now, but he's lost several positions as a result. One of the things that happens, I believe, Mike, is the cars are hot. You pull them down here, they get wet. And all that moisture, the heat causes it to moisture to get up in the wiring systems and everything else. And they may fix themselves once the cars get hot again and dry all that out. Just like we've seen before, single file the first four cars, then double and triple wide as they jockey for position back in the field. And right now, Kevin Harvick in the 29, he has that teammate of Robbie Gordon, the 31, hooked up behind him. Like another line of cars, but I just it just looks like that inside line, the one that's prevailing. It's the one that's moving. And I know Robbie Gordon wants to. I, I, he wants to get up there. Kevin Harvick want to get up there. They think they can race these guys, but they can't get to them. Robbie Gordon, 31, told me. Thursday after winning the qualifying race they came down here tested in January they didn't like anything they had the children's team went back ripped the bodies off all the cars completely redid them and came down here for speed weeks with a, a whole different package well we've made a big deal we made a big deal out of you know the DEI cars and the children's cars working together sharing information but I think that game might be over all right, then the black flag is being displayed. It's for Sterling Marlin in the 40 car, and we're going to show you right here for a replay. We have out of bounds on the backstretch. This yellow line right here, that's out of bounds. You cannot go below that and advance your position, and there he's dipping below the line to pass that car there. Black flag, that could put him a lap down. Again, a mistake you can't make. Well, the only thing that I don't like about that, Larry, is it can be forced under that. You get a run on a guy, you get down there, and he forces you below the yellow line. He can actually put you in a position where NASCAR has to bring in. And since it's so hard to subjectively determine whether you drove down there or were pushed down there, NASCAR has said the line is the line no matter what. And we saw yesterday in the Bush Series race, there were some guys get down there. What they did, they backed up a little bit and did not advance their position. NASCAR has no problem with them doing that. Yeah, but if Harlan backed up, he'd be for him. Oh, he can't back up. I mean, look at all these cars behind him. How's he going to back up? Dick Bergren. Well, that was very much a topic of conversation in the drivers' meeting this morning. And Mike Kelton said that if anybody pushed another car below that yellow line, they are liable to get a black flag. Or if you simply drive below the yellow line, you're liable to get a penalty. Either way, to Steve. Sterling's trying to see. He's got his hand out. He's uh, the whole field behind him. <laughs> and Daryl, you're exactly right. Sterling Marlin just radioed. Lee McCall and said the car to my right took a hard left. I didn't have a choice. I had to come down. Well, use it to your advantage. Come down pit road, top the thing up with fuel, and get back out there in a hurry. And he's headed to pit road now. Remember, he can't make any more mistakes. Once he gets to that first white line, he has to be 55 miles an hour. You don't want another pit. The problem he's going to have is because we're just a fresh off of a restart. All the field's going to be together, and he's going to be all by himself, Jeff. Darrell, what I was watching right there, and we had a report, the 38 car, Elliot Sadler had an ignition problem. Remember, he got off of it, had to switch boxes. I believe he was slowed down on the back straightaway because of that, and Sterling was trying to avoid him when he went below the line. So I think when they look back at that, that could have been what caused him to do that. Well, you know, there's officials everywhere. They're watching from, from up here. Calls are subjective, you know, and uh, they made the call. Like, like Mike said, the yellow line's the yellow line. Sometimes how you got down there is you know, not, not, not debatable. He's just getting up to speed in turn two. The field across the start finish line problem. He has nobody to draft with. He's going to be getting beat over a second lap. He needs that caution flag bad. He actually came out in better shape than I thought he would as he goes down the back. Let's see here. They're coming. They're just now starting off a turn two. And he's just now going into turn three. He's got the length of the back straightaway, probably about 10 laps to hope that maybe a debris caution shows up. 
Harlan back to back winner of the 500 1994 and 95 now almost a lap behind. And let's show you again what happened to Sterling Marlin. Did he move to advance or was he pushed below the line. Let's see. Well, here he comes. Uh, well I don't know I'd hate to make that call but it's a ball and strike call Daryl. It really is. As they say in racing it is what it is. Michael Waltrip and teammate Dale Earnhardt Jr. who dominated these restrictor plate races at Daytona and Talladega lead at 76 laps. The Daytona 500 on Fox is brought to you by UPS. What can Brown do for you? UPS, the official delivery company of NASCAR, delivers a chance to win four tickets to next year's Daytona 500. Log on to FoxSports.com, keyword UPS Racing. We're talking about Sterling Marlin and the penalty that he just served. Mike Hunter, the president of NASCAR, addressed the driver's meeting and told them just what to expect if they weren't below the yellow line. Some of you have figured out that in order to protect your spot, you can move down and right against the yellow line and to keep somebody from going around you on the inside. That's okay. But if you do it while that guy is trying to get around you, if you move him down there when he's got a quarter panel or a fender up alongside of you, in our opinion, if you've made him go down there, that he can't check up quick enough to get in behind you, if you've made him go down there, then you're subject to black flag too. That is how the rule was explained. Let's go back to the With crew chief Lee McCall. Now, Lee, we saw you pleading your case with the officials on pit road. What did they say? Well, I guess they said we uh, passed by the yellow line, but we were forced down there, and, you know, we'll, we'll just see what we can get here. Hopefully we'll get a caution stay on the lead lap, but it's an unfortunate situation, and uh, hopefully we can get something out of it. Let's go to Matt Yoakum. And Steve, an update on Dale Earnhardt Jr. back on lap 75. He said the volts are now down to nine and a half. Last time by, he says it's at the edge of the gauge. They're just going to tell him to keep riding it out. They're hoping the next band of showers hit while they're still up front. His father tried to win this race for 19 years and had everything possible go wrong. Cut tire on the last lap. Seagull hit the oil cooler. You name it. Finally, on the 20th try, Dale Earnhardt was successful in winning the 500. And I'm sure now, Daryl, he's cut everything off except the engine. That's the only thing needing a power supply right now. But to go back and talk about Sterling Marlin, we've been watching his lap times. He's running like 49.90 to 50 flat. The pack is running 49 flat. So he's getting beat a second lap. Right now, he's almost six, five to six seconds ahead of that group, which means in five to six laps, he will be last. And, and, and back about Dale Jr., here's the thing I always say. A driver, in my opinion, you have a luck bank. You know, you, you start off the year with it full of luck. And, and he has used an awful lot of it down here so far this week. And uh, I hope he's not overdrawn. Keep running best you can. Looks like some more rain is coming this way. Just keep running if you can. That's his spot of Ty Norris talking to Dale Earnhardt Jr. And look at that front pack. Waltrip Jr., Tony Stewart, Kurt Busch, who won three of the season's last five races, and behind them. Look at this pack double file. Todd Bodine getting overhauled by the two children's cars, Kevin Harvick and Robbie Gordon, now working together. And you know, that's good to see because I got, got this sense watching those two in the beginning of the race. They weren't working together like they should. But now it looks like they are. But I bet you Richard Childress had something to do with it by talking to both of them, possibly during that red flag. I think during that red flag that Mr. Childress probably had those boys over in his red truck talking to them. How about Jerry Nadu? Danbury, Connecticut, ex-road racer who restarted 18th, and now he has that Army tank humming along in fifth place. And speaking of Army tank, went over to Afghanistan a few weeks ago and actually drove a tank and spent about a week over with our troops just a few miles from the enemy lines. How did it handle? Uh, like a tank. <laughs> Push like a dump truck, he said. Push like a dump truck. 
They know, replacing uh, Ken Schrader at uh, MB2 Motorsports this year in that Pontiac. I'd really like to see us go long green here, even make a green flag pit stop and come back out because we heard Jeff Gordon talk about long runs. I'm really good, and I think that's going to be what, what's going to make the difference in this race. If we can stay under green and make some long runs. You'd like to see that? Sterling Marlin wouldn't. He wants a caution flag. No, he's. they've got him in his sights now. It won't be long now. They'll be up there and putting him a lap down. But he's got a good car. He can hang tight. And if a caution comes out, he can get back to the What's the leader looking for, Dick? Well, Michael Waltrip is playing the rain strategy, Mike. That's why they came in and just took gas only, no tires. That was a real quick pit stop. That's how come he's in the lead. But without taking those tires, the car has gotten a little bit loose. They have just enough gas to go to about the halfway point, at which point they hope it starts to rain and they'll win the race. 15 laps to halfway. Look up at on the outside point, there. At that point, the race would become official if it has to be halted. This is the first time we've seen cars go to the outside and make passes, and that's what we really need. And I think Kevin Harvey's going to pull them right on up there. And there you see our fuel gauge just a while ago. We saw them full. Now you see them, they're getting down there. But they're not that's the secret to that outside line right now. If there's four good race cars up there, Kevin Harvey, who just went to the bottom and left his teammate at the top, Robbie Gordon, and the two hitter cars of Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon is up there as well. Harvick looks awful good down, down that outside. I mean, down here last week in the uh, Bud shootout, Dale Jr. made all his passes on the outside. This is what we need. Look at this. If we can go long green, look at Michael. He jumps over in front of Harvick now. See you, Dale Jr. But Bush makes it three wide as he tries to sneak through the middle. Now let's see if Robbie Gordon, the 31, yeah, he's going to slide. Look, well, he looked like he was going to try to slide in that bottom groove. Oh, Bendis is picking up, Larry. Bendis is picking up. No, not for Dale Earnhardt Jr., though, Matt Yoakum. VW, he says the car is starting to cut in, on and off. In fact, the last lap, he told his spotter, Ty Norris, to talk to Tony Stewart's spotter. Tell him that my car is starting to cut on and off. He's hitting me. I don't want him to spin me out. He is waving. He's going to pit. You can see his hand waving in the monitor. He's going to pit next time by. One of, if not the best car during speed weeks, may have lost his chance for a Daytona 500 victory. Your battery needs to maintain a certain amount of voltage to fire those spark plugs. And Junior doesn't have enough fire. And, and there's so many things about a race car. It always amazes me how they run three and a half, 500, three and a half hours, 500 miles, and everything works. You know, I mean, there's a lot of moving parts on that sucker out there going 190 miles an hour. So it's pretty surprising when nothing goes wrong. He does not pit. Junior stays out on the racetrack. Yeah, I mean, on Fox tracks, his speed, 176 miles an hour. A little bit off the pace, not badly off the pace, but that problem likely will not improve itself. It's not going to get better. It's only going to get worse. But what he's trying Without to do is... Without losing a lap there, Tony, which I know you'll lose one, but I'm telling you, the weather's moving. This is the dilemma. You know... He'll be in last anyway in another lap, so let's just put a battery in it. That's Junior. We're 12 laps from the halfway. What they're trying to do is nurse that thing to see if we can get to halfway. You, and this is a lot of things going on. You have the weather coming, your battery's going dead, and, and you're trying to make that decision. Do we come to pit road and do it now, or do, you, do we try to wait? Now. The call is now. Yeah, and they've, they've caught Sterling. He's getting ready to go a lap down. I thought he might be the, the uh, fly in the ointment here as Michael got to him that Harvick might be able to get to the outside of Michael, but Michael's putting a block on him. But here goes Harvick up on the outside. There you see the battery right there with a the quick disconnect. They're going to try to get that battery in there without losing as much time as they can. Now, Tony Stewart's the key. What's he going to do down the back? Harvick outside, Waltrip inside. The left rear off, Matt. Mike J. Guineri going to work on the left rear. He's got the tire off. He's getting the battery out. They're going to change the battery. Now it's just a question of how much time he is going to lose, how fast they can get this battery changed. If they can still hold on, not lose enough time, so they can still try to keep their hopes for a win alive. As the pack goes by the front stretch, Junior refires the car. Jay still working hard to the left rear fender well. Losing so much valuable time. We had a great battle for the lead, but Kevin Harvick lost his teammate. Robbie Gordon dropped way back, and that was the end of Harvick's charge up the outside. But look how Sterling Marlin, who's fighting to stay on the lead lap, is pulling these guys around here. He's holding them off. He's got a fast car. We know that. 
he could be the guy that really makes a difference on who's going to lead this race. So if a caution flag would come out right now, Marlon would get a free pass and come all the way around. If Michael Walter gets past him, Sterling has stuck a lap down. And you know, he had enough momentum, there, and He was fast enough, and he's protecting the bottom. I think Michael may be content to ride there with him. Well, they're not. Their lap times are good. They haven't slowed down any. And uh, Sterling's really not affecting them one way or another. I just think that Michael might get in trouble by trying to get around him. Now, Dale Earnhardt Jr., he just come off pit road. He's going to go two laps down, so he's going to be well more than two laps down. One minute and seven second pit stop. Trying to come back up to speed. And that car still sounds flat. 91 laps complete. Nine laps to halfway. Michael Waltrip leads the Daytona 500 on Fox. Eight this time. Look at Harvick. I mean, he just, oh, he got screwed. The Daytona 500 on. Oh, five. trouble, trouble, turn three. One car smashing off the wall and sliding to a halt. Caution is out. That's our pole sitter, Jeff Green, in the 30 car. Sterling Marley gets his lap back, Darrell. Yeah, he does. And Jimmy Spencer is involved in the number seven and slides to a halt right near the entrance to Pit Road. At lap 95. The third caution flag of the day. There is Spencer's spent dog. I tried, Fred, though. I couldn't get outside of him. I tried to get outside of him. Jeff Green is okay. You heard Spencer say he tried to get outside and could not to miss the crash. This comes right on the heels of most of the teams fixing to come to pit road and make green flag pit stops. So we're not going to get that long green again that uh, I think some of the guys were hoping for. Okay. Do you stop or do you wait out lap 100 and see if it sprinkles? I know I'm. I'm a, <laughs> uh, you go send the guy over to the radar. It's going to be a different guy in 1992, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> in his book, Larry wrote about the guy he sent to the radar. He come back and said, everything's great, Larry. It's all green. <laughs> or no, he said, everything's great. But then it started raining. He said, it's watch for debris on them the left side tires. just picked up and the showers are on the way. Jeff Hammond. Now we're going to find out who can sit on that hot stove, as they say, and sweat them bullets and get by with it. Michael Walter and several of these teams are going to have to stop here in the next five to six laps. It'll be real interesting to see how this little scenario plays out. Now, the one thing I find interesting is for somebody like Sterling Marlin, who's going to be at the very back of the pack, he can come and get four tires if he wanted to, and he could really make things interesting. Leaders are in. 
but Jeff, if I am Sterling Marlin, I'm at the back of the pack. I'm gonna wait till I get one to go, and I'm gonna just see if this rain comes. That's Jeannie. exactly right. I just stayed out, Jeannie. Well, Larry Mack, that's the conversation that was going on in the 25th when they decided to gamble. Tony Stewart coming in, getting some right side tires and some fuel, and hoping that the gamble paid off. Dick. Michael Waltrip taking two tires and a load of gas, and he's gone. To Steve. Gas only for Jimmy Johnson. He's away. Right side tires on the 24 of Jeff Gordon. Cars that did not pit include Todd Bodine and Ricky Craven. Look at those dark clouds coming. I mean, the 40 car, he's been in a pit. He topped up with fuel. He's got some laps to play with. I believe right at this uh, situation right here, I'd have stayed out. The youngest of the three brothers from Shimon, New York, Todd Bodine, is the new leader of the Daytona 500. Jimmy Spencer walked from his car. He was okay after that crash. And we'll show it to you as it unfolds here. Jimmy Spencer was trying to get around the outside as Jeff Green was spinning and just ran out of racetrack. Just wasn't enough racetrack up there to get by him, and he just clips him. Jeff Green is also out of his car and will take the mandatory ride to the infield care center. 96 laps complete. Do you pit or do you pray for rain? You top of nine, you pray for rain. We'll come back and find out. New to Winston Cup this year, the McDonald's drive through challenge powered by Powering. All pit stops will be timed, and the eligible crew with the shortest total time on pit road each week wins $20,000. The season-long winner gets a quarter million. Work on Dale Jr.'s car, and you've got to be agile when you're on pit road. Watch Todd Colburn, the jack man for Bill Elliott, try to scooch out of the way as Jack Sprague goes by. Todd gets upended, gets right back up, back at it. Well, most all of the cars that did not pit when the pits were first opened have pitted now as we're on one to go. Steve Burns. With Chad Canals, Chad, tell us about your strategy, fuel only, and did you get enough fuel in the car? Well, we got enough to get out ahead of these other guys. You know, we're just gonna have to wait and see. I hope that the rain comes. You just, it's, it's hard to predict what's going to happen. You know, there's a big storm coming. Our car's really good. We've been trying to get out front all day. Now that we're there, if Jimmy can keep it there, from say for the next 20 laps, the rain comes, we'll win the Daytona 500. If it goes more than 20, 25 laps, we're going to be in trouble. So we're just going to have to see what happens. Last year, Johnson was a rookie. He won the pole for the 500 in one of Jeff Gordon's best cars from the year before, but he crashed out of the race early. That's a million three, million three hundred thousand gamble. I think it's worth it because you know it's going to rain. It's coming, you can feel it, you can see it. I think low, it was a smart call. Yep, low clouds moving in over the speedway. Jimmy Spencer and Jeff Green were both checked at the infield care center and released. They are okay, as we're going to get the restart to begin the 100th race. I think we're getting ready to see what it would be like if it was 10 to go, because that's how these guys are going to race. See Dale Earnhardt Jr. and A car up there on the inside line. He's two laps down right now. They are building the speed here with the Fox tracks as they head off into turn one. Just grabbed high gear, 145 miles an hour. With the restrictor plate under the carburetor, it takes about a lap to get up to full speed here. See, Jimmy almost dropped to the inside, and then he looked back and saw Tony was hanging to the outside. He's going to have to do some mirror driving to keep these guys behind him now. Chevy versus Chevy, Hendrick Motorsports versus Joe Gibbs Racing, and one car slices down to the inside, Michael Waltrip. And I shouldn't say mirror driving, he should drive defensively to keep guys behind him. Tony Stewart, the 20 car, he paid the price on that. He's going to go from second to about fifth. They're all the real, buddy. Great job, Jimmy. Got a smoker up there. Tony Stewart's the four car, Larry. I'm not sure what it is. It's possibly a tire. Halfway. 
And now this race would be official if it fell victim to rain. And look who's at the front. 48, right in the middle, of, right behind Michael is the 24 car. Now, Darrell, what can they do to get those two teammates together? Right now, they're split by Michael Waltrip. Well, what, what the Gordon's going to try to do is get under Michael off of one of these corners, either, either off of two or off of four, so he can get up there and get with his teammate. Gordon pokes the nose down low. Michael Waltrip comes down to cover the spot. Single file. Might be a bit of oil for Mike Skinner. Right on the bottom, it's you. Up to 15 to 24 to 20. Like we've seen on some other restarts. And, buddy, let me tell you, the intensity is picking up at the front of the pack. Jeff Gordon goes high. Jimmy Johnson moves up high to pick up his teammate in the draft and then but up see, high again. He wants to help. He wants to help, but if he does, he'll lose the lead. Help is on the way for Michael, though, Daryl. His teammate, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Here we go. Got, got, a, got a car with a problem going down toward turn one here. Smoke and flame from that last car in line, Mike Skinner. Something broke. We saw it smoke just a couple laps ago. Got something in the left front. Looks like it's locked up. Right now, we still agree. No caution. Boy, Michael's all over the back of the 48 car. And here comes his teammate, Earnhardt hey, Jr. Uh, you know, that's help. But he's not going to give him help. It don't look like Daryl. He went all to the around, outside. Bud. He always worried about getting those two all laps by himself back. the 15. You're clear all around. If I was if I was a Jimmy Johnson, I wouldn't care if Dale Jr. did get in front of me. I just grabbed him. All week long, Jimmy Johnson has been trying to figure out how to work the cars behind him to help his car move forward. Now the caution is out, but Dale Earnhardt Jr. they they took the caution, so he won't be able to get this lap back. They had already taken the caution flag. Well, that was a bummer. I mean, a few feet more, and he got one of those laps back, or a few feet less. Mike Skinner will try to make it back around. He will make it to Pitt Road. And the Morgan McClure Pontiac. I don't know about y'all, but to <laughs> pick, I think my heart rate has picked up considerably. <laughs> Everybody's pulse rate goes up. We're past halfway in the Daytona 500. The 45th annual Daytona 500 on Fox is brought to you by Chevrolet. Wherever there's a winner's circle, we'll be there. 104 laps complete. They've given them one to go. We'll go back to green next time by. A carpet of clouds has descended over this speedway. You can see that rain off turn number two in the not too distant future, and it's headed this way. Listen why my heart rate picked up considerably. Dale Jr. is racing to get his lap back. He gets into the side of Tony. Tony gets into the side of Gordon, and Tony turns his car sideways. That's that's may not look like that much, but when it's 190 mile an hour and you get that much far out of shape, lucky to save it. Watch oh, this. He forces his way under him. And I'm telling you, Tony did a great job of hanging on to that bad boy. And, and that's why we talk about three wide being a bad deal right there. And Jeff Gordon ended up in 10th place as a result. Here's the field. On the lead lap, there are 34 cars contending for the win. Jimmy Johnson, the leader, number 48, 15, Michael Waltrip, 97. The first Ford in line is Kurt Busch. His teammate, Mark Martin, is lined up right behind him. And that could be a potent combination on this restart. And right behind them, the two Richard Childress Chevy teammates, Kevin Harvick and Robbie Gordon, then Tony Stewart, Mike Wallace, Jeff Burton, and Jeff Gordon. I just think it's incredible how the complexion of the race, guys you hadn't talked about all day, Kurt Busch and Mark Martin, where'd they come from? Well, you know where they came from? They've been riding around back there because they didn't have to show their hand. Now the show's about to come to an end, and they're up there in the hunt. 96 laps to go. If it does not rain, pace car is in. Jimmy Johnson. Starting his sophomore wait, season wait, 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 wait. from El Cajon, California, leads them down for the restart. Remember, two laps down after having that battery problem, he would love to clear Jimmy Johnson to take the lead of this race and get one of those laps back. Well, you're calling him that thing right here. He's going to pull Michael by Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson's hung out the drive. He takes all the votes for Jimmy. Yeah, because Kurt Busch in the 97, he's in second place right now. He, they're just going to keep drop kicking Jimmy Johnson to the back. And Johnson had no choice. By the rules, he had to start in the outside lane. And did you see the move Mark Martin made from the top to the bottom to hang on to his teammate Kurt Busch, Mark in the six car? He's looking a little racy here past half. We're going to see what all these guys have got now. There's no holes barred now, baby. You let it all hang out. Let the rough side drag. 
Does it pay to have a team like Steve Earl Rodriguez even when he's two laps down? Oh, turn him down here. I think that's Ward Burton. Rowdy goes way. right in front of all these cars. Everybody going to miss him. Yes, yes. Oh, he right. hits the outside wall hard again. Caution is out. Oh, man. What do you say, Darrell, all the time? Caution. Cautions, great caution. The defending champion of the Daytona 500, Ward Burton. Driving for Bill Davis crashes at lap 107. And Dale Jr. gets a lap back. Jimmy Johnson's crew team, Chad Knauss, not happy. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. gains back one of the laps he's behind. That's why you never give up. You know, you set up and you say, what the heck is he doing up there? Well, you never know what can happen. And the good thing about it, no more cars than a lap down. Jeff, he's going to be able to come in, get four fresh tires, and go right back near the front again on the inside line. Yes, he will. And the good thing about that, he's going to be in front of what's going to be happening behind Michael and the rest of these guys because everybody realizes the race is going to be ended here very shortly if this weather looks like it does in Michael turn two. If it comes back in, this race will be over. So basically, we're seeing a 10 to go or a 12 to go type race right now in the boat. And everybody's pushing and shoving. This is the race right now for day number 500. Because the caution flag comes out and Dale Earnhardt Jr. is ahead of the leader, he gets the free pass because the pace car picks up the leader, he gets to go all the way around. And one of the most emotional speeches I ever heard was Jimmy Valvano, the coach. I mean, he said, don't ever give up. That is the, that's the way racers have to race. You can never give up because you, too many things can happen. You don't drop your head and pack up your toolbox and go home. You keep racing and you race hard, especially when you got a fast car. Junior was two laps down. He's gotten one of those laps back. Let's show you what happened in number 22, the Dodge of Ward Burton at turn four. He'll be coming from the right side of your screen. It just looks like he was up in the high side, just lost it totally on his own. There was no one near him in behind. But this is hard impact on the driver's side right there, man. I think he lucked out though. He hit the right, uh, left front and then snapped it into the left rear. I don't believe the driver's door got a hard lick. Gonna hook up Burton's car and haul it back to the garage where he'll join Jeff Green, Jimmy Spencer, Kenny Schrader, and Ryan Newman. And right now, because where his car is almost at the entrance of Pit Road, Pit Road is closed right now. Once they get that car drug away, then we'll see pit road open and we'll probably see a little bit of pit road action, but probably not by the guys leading the race up at the front. No, I think Jimmy Johnson's the one that's biting his fingernails right now, or at least his crew chief, Chad Canals, because they didn't get that car full of fuel. These caution laps are certainly helping him, but if he go very long, he's going to be in trouble. Let's watch from Bill Elliott what happened in turn four in Ward Burton. More than a Daytona 500 on Fox after this. He's up, he's up the Daytona 500 on Fox is brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. By Pizza Hut, home of the new stuffed crust gold pizza. By H&R Block and H&R Block Financial Advisors. And by United States Army Reserve, an army of one. With Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers in the Hollywood Hotel just above uh, Victory Lane as the rain is uh, starting to fall under our fifth caution. And a couple of important things happened here because we're on our 109th lap, 270 miles. So if it needed to be called, the race would be official. But on that last caution, Little Lee and Sterling Marlin got laps back. Yeah, they Sterling right now, he started way back there. Next thing you know, he's worked all the way back to 17th. And Little Lee's already showed how strong he is once again. If the rains would stay away, I wouldn't count him out yet. But the guy right now who made the best gamble all day was uh, uh, Chad, Chad Knauss and Jimmy Johnson, well, Jimmy Johnson guys right there. They really made a great little call right there. They only put one can of fuel in it, but they were betting the fact that the rains would come before they needed a second can. So it looks like right now they're in the catbird seat. All right, Michael Waltrip, who led uh, earlier in the race. So let's go down and check with Dick Berger and his crew chief. Dick? Well, everybody on top of Michael Waltrip's pit box, except his crew chief, Slugger Labby, was sitting here under umbrellas. You don't have one. At least you didn't have one until I showed up. You don't mind the rain? No. I hope it keeps on raining, too. Uh, I hope NASCAR and Daytona haven't paid their light bill so they don't turn their lights on so we can just end this thing and get it over with. But uh, Napa Chevrolet's been good for the last 10 days. As soon as we unload, it's been fast off the truck, qualified fourth, finished second, 125 is our teammate, and it's been strong all day, and it's just been a lot of hard work. We started building this car back in May of last year. Our big goal 
after we won the July race was to come back here in February and win this race and uh, we're hoping that we can do it. Well, they won here in 2001. It looks awful good for them to win in 2003. Mike. They're going to red flag the race. The cars coming down pit road behind the pace cars. You watch helmet cam on and, Michael Walter. And look at him. That's his. That's his leg right there. Look how he's all wadded up in there. You know he's six five. I don't know how he gets that big body down inside that race car, but he does. He's six five with about five foot of legs. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Ward Burton was not injured in that crash at turn four. Went to the care center. They just quickly uh, released him. Ward Burton is okay. Hey Michael, this is DW up in the tower. How you read, bud? Good. How you feel, bud? Bad. You happy? Something's up. I've never heard Michael answer a question with one word before. We're told that another car besides Dale Jr. is having electrical difficulties, and that's Robbie Gordon. Not sure if it's the same problem, the alternator not charging, or a different one. I, yeah, what what the deal was Michael he wanted to get out of there. They're going to put the car cover on. He had to get out of there. So we're red flagged for rain for the second time today. There's a big band of showers on the back straightaway and over turn number three. And I'll tell you NASCAR fans are a hardy bunch even though they're limited what they can bring into the speedway. I hope they've got ponchos. Our Pepsi fan cam has been busy today around the grandstand as these folks have toughed it out. Through one red flag for rain, and now here is the second one. The Daytona 500, 109 laps complete. We have our second red flag for rain. We'll be right back. The 45th annual Daytona 500 on Fox is brought to you by Budweiser. The best things in life are the things that are true. Budweiser. Our Budweiser aerial cam is up, but maybe not for long because off here to the west and over here are some big wide bands of showers. The rain's let up right now. If they can quickly dry this track, we might get back to green, but who knows for how long? Dick Bergman. I'm with Jimmy Johnson currently running in. Where are you? Third spot. They kind of ganged up on you out there, didn't they? I knew I was in trouble one way, sh one shape. I don't know. I'm a little lost for words right now. Um, you know, I'm about five laps short on the rain and when I was leading under the caution, but <clears throat> I'd rather win this thing under green. I didn't know what to do in that situation, and and I only had two options. And with Junior and, and Junior having or Michael having Junior there, there was multiple options there. The 33 got a slow start and let Michael jump in. The lane's going to follow the momentum, and, and Michael had the momentum, and everybody knows how strong the two DEI cars have been. So I'm just happy I fell in line where I did. Uh, and if, if Junior wasn't there, we'd still be leading right now. It's just just how it is. But I got to thank everyone at Team Lowe's Race for the hard work. And I know I had all the employee owners up on the edge of their seats there for a little while. Hopefully, hopefully we get back to green and we can go back out there and try to get the lead. What will you do when we go back to green? I'm going to push Kurt Busch as hard as I can and try to get him past that 15 and take myself by him too. Okay, good for you. Let's go to Chris. Stick and uh, Jimmy. And remember, uh, twice in the history of the Daytona 500, the race has been shortened by rain. In 1965, Fred Lawrence had won his only 500 after over 332 miles in. And then in 1990, uh, 1966, Richard Petty took his second uh, trophy, uh, two laps short of the scheduled uh, distance. And we are officially uh, a race here if they can continue as you get a look at Dale Earnhardt Jr. Now let's talk about uh, the first rain delay we had. He was sailing along clearly ahead and then there were some uh, mechanical problems. Yeah, they had a uh, alternator or battery problem right there come up on the Budweiser Chevy. And, you know, they elected to uh, stay out. And, you know, I, I guess on hind hindsight, you'd be like, think about coming in if they had a perfect opportunity to change that battery and I believe right then you saw Dale Earnhardt Jr. talking to his crew chief Tony Urey Jr. and they're probably thinking about that if we could have got that done a little sooner we'd, we'd still be in a good shape and he showed how strong he is because he's already got one of his two laps back if the rains do stop you know he's gonna be in a good position once again to possibly get that lap back so I, Let's just see what the weather does, because he's clearly not out of this race. There's a lot of racing to get. Yeah, crew chief has to play weatherman as well. Let's uh, go to his uh, DEI partner and uh, Michael Waltrip, who is currently leading the race with our Matt Yoka. Matt? And Michael Waltrip keeps looking around. You're looking to the skies. Do you feel like the heavy stuff has already come and gone, or is there more coming? I don't think the heavy stuff is going to come down for quite some time now. I feel good about uh, where we're at, obviously. DW won Southern 500 by doing a rain dance. Could you cut him loose up there and let him jive around a little bit uh, we can cut you loose 
I can't, I can't dance. But, uh, you know, when I pray to God, I pray for first for him to forgive me of my sins and make me a better person. And then I ask him for what I want. So uh, I've done all those things, and I want it to rain really bad. Let's talk about the move that you put on young Jimmy Johnson. Well, he was in a bit of a spine, and, uh, you know, you can only control your own car. And uh, my plan was for hopefully Junior to get a great start and the 33 not to get such a great start, and I could get between them and push by. Luckily for me, it, it worked, and I was able to get the lead. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's, we, it's wild at a plate race, usually the last 20 laps. It's no holds bar. Everybody's running into you. It's all crazy. But now, with the weather, it's, it's, it was all that way forever. And so uh, I had a bunch of stuff going on, and I'm just so thankful that I've, I've been able to have uh, the luck I've had to get our car up front, thanks to Slugger, all the boys, Klausner Furniture, all my sponsors, Oreo, Napa. We're here now, and we're going to enjoy it. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we can win this race. Uh, Daytona, people don't understand. It, this is Daytona. And, uh, and the Daytona 500. It is. It's all those things. And uh, it just moves my heart to be in this position. Uh, and I want to win no matter what. Rain, shine. If it's an official race and I want it, don't even ask me if I cared if it rained, because I don't. You told me also that it was going to be very special for you if you could win this race for Slugger. I just wanted to win it for DEI. You know, Slugger's a big part of DEI. He's helped complement the eight and make them better. He's helped complement the one and make them better. Um, he is a, is a wonderful human being. He puts his heart and soul into what he does, and you, you appreciate people with passion. That's why, as mad as I get at race car drivers, I love them, because we're all passionate about this sport and about driving race cars. And uh, Slugger's that way about working on them. And he just doesn't quit working until he thinks he's given me the best car to drive. And um, right now, the one he's built is uh, looking good, thanks to Richie Gilmore, all the folks that uh, make this possible. Just, uh, just uh, thankful for the opportunity. And, um, you know, they have lights here. I I'm figuring we'll race more, but um, I'm going to hope we don't. Well, it's all about being at the right place at the right time. To Chris Myers. All right, thanks very much. Uh, DEI cars have actually led uh, 90 laps in the field, and there is uh, Tony Uri Jr., crew chief for Little League, with uh, Slugger Labby, the crew chief for Michael Walter. And that right there is Rich Gilmore right to the left right there, and I think that Dick Bergman's got some more information for us. Well, I'm with Kurt Busch. He started in 36th position all the way up to second. You've passed a lot of cars. What do you think? We're going to get the rest of this race in. You happy where you are? Both sides of the fence. We're, we're happy where we're at. The Taurus is running pretty smooth against all these other Chevys. And, you know, for all these great race fans and then, of course, our TV audience today with everybody being weathered out, it'd be interesting to get back going again. I've got a teammate, a couple cars behind, and we're just doing like we can. We just got to find the right hole and, and make sure we stay plugged in. Where is the car strongest? Following the DEI cars. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, but you got to get by at least one of them. I'd love to. And it, it's an interesting element that we have with Dale Jr. having his battery issue, getting laps back. We know which way the 15 is going to go. I hope that the 8 doesn't get back on the lead lap. But if he does, it'll be the same matchup with two RCR cars. There's two Fords up here with my teammate Mark. You know, there's a lot of elements that are going into this. This is just a very, you know, eventful 500 distance every year it is. A light rain is beginning to pick up. To Jeannie. Well, I figure if we want to know the weather, we go to the guy that lives in this area. So you're going to give us the answer. Are we going to get more racing in here or what? It's hard to say. Um, the story I've been hearing all along was when it got here the second time it was going to be here for good. Uh, but but I really don't know. It's coming down pretty good right now. Uh, I don't know. I'm so proud of Ben Leslie and this uh, Viagra team, man. Uh, you know, we really have worked hard and really these guys deserve a great result. And, uh, you know, they've, they've just put me in a great race car today. Uh, it took a lot of uh, a lot of figuring and a lot of uh, smart people to put this all together for us. But uh, so it's been a really good run so far. Where did you come from? It two names that surfaced just before the rain delay here. Kurt Busch and yourself quietly out there all day just getting the job done and suddenly making a move. Well, we've had a good handling car and uh, we haven't had good speed. But, uh, you know, with all that wind stirred up from all those cars, you know, we managed to uh, work our way up there. Great pit stops, great strategy, and you know, just a fabulous team. I've got a lot to be thankful for and a lot to look forward to. Uh, 2003 could be our year. All right, we hope today is your day. We get more racing at Steve Burns. With Robbie Gordon. Robbie, you're sitting sixth right now. Tell us about your day. Well, Kevin, I mean, we almost cleared him that one time. We got stuck on the outside. Um, then Kevin had to get back in line and kind of got stuck there. But I was fortunate to get back down in front of Tony. Um, 
Got a fast race car. Got Tony Stewart behind us, who's also very fast. So um, hopefully we get back out and do some more racing here. Uh, we got, you know, what, 90, 97 laps to go or 92 laps to go. And I'd, uh, I'd like the opportunity to go after go for it. Uh, we've been kind of sitting around riding most of the day, taking, taking care of our race car, and it's time to go. Robbie, how frustrating is it for you to start and stop, start and stop? Yeah, it's not that big of a deal. I just, um, you know, you just want to, you think about it and you can't work on your car in these run flat conditions and you're like, okay, we can do this, this, and this right now, we'd probably be good enough. Uh, car's running real good. Uh, got my fingers crossed that so we'll get this thing back in and if we do, um, we've got a shot at it. Thanks, Robbie. Let's go to Dick Berger. With teammate Kevin Harvick, here we are again back underneath the uh, rain umbrella. What do you think? Well, I think, um, I think it's raining. And I think if it keeps raining, we're going to be running out of time. We're, we're picking them off one by one. Uh, Jim Goodrin's car is really good. Uh, Where are you best? Are you best on the outside, the bottom? Where does the car work best? I'm best wherever that 31 is. Uh, that's our plan right now. There's two of us up there, whether he's in front of me or I'm in front of him. That's that's our plan is to do everything we can to stay together because uh, that's that's going to be to our benefit. But uh, our car is good anywhere. We just that much. Uh, if we could have just cleared the 15, we'd have been all good. So. We'll just have to wait and see what the rain does, and hopefully it stops. It's a Daytona 500. We can't cut it short. Yeah, I know. You want to win this race anyway. That's Let's fine. go to Chris. All right. Thanks, Dick. And that's one of the advantages uh, during the rain delays. You look at Michael Waltrip, our current leader, after the second rain delay here at the Daytona 500. We have a chance to talk to drivers in the middle of the action. And crew chiefs, uh, Jeff, we heard from Robbie Gordon on their thoughts of stopping, starting, waiting out the rain uh, from a crew chief perspective uh, you're juggling a lot of things and we saw the gamble too with Chad Canals and Jimmy Johnson right right now what you're sitting there as far as the crew chief's concerned you've been over there you've been looking at what NASCAR is going to do about the weather you're watching the weather reports yourself you're trying to make a decision is it over or are we just kind of like in a holding pattern and if you're in a holding pattern you start thinking strategy what do I need to do next are we going to have some more rain coming if not are we going to have problems just like the eight car head are we going to have a battery problem we have a radio problem all the little things that can come up this is what the car chief and the crew chief are doing right now. They're trying to think some more about strategy until NASCAR jumps up and says, hey, guys, we can't go no more. All right, let's get more on this uh, from uh, Daryl and uh, Larry with Mike Joy upstairs. Gentlemen. Five caution flags, two red flags due to rain, 11 lead changes among eight drivers, most of those happening during the pit exchanges. But, Daryl, the one car that's been able to fight his way to the front on the outside, if he has help, has been Kevin Harvick. He's been making a race of this. Oh, I don't think there's any question that the two children's cars would like to get hooked up. Now they've only got one car up there to worry about, the 15. Although the eight, bad news for everybody. He's going to restart on the inside. He's going to be right up there beside Michael again. Now, could that play against Michael? You know, could he hold Michael to the outside and somebody get under him? That's something Jimmy Johnson needs to think about. But what I do like, I like the way my, I said from the very beginning, Michael is running his own race. He's had no problems. He's made great pit stops. They've had good strategy. And he's been up front all day long without anything happening. You know, an uneventful race so far for him. So having Earnhardt Jr. line up on the inside could either be the best or the worst thing yeah, for it, him. Well, you saw what happened on that last restart, and that could work against Michael this time. Larry, if you're Dale Jr.'s crew chief, what do you want him to do on the restart? I mean, I want him to try to get hooked up with Michael because there's no question if he's up there with Michael and Michael's leading the race, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is going to get his lap back if we get another caution. But I look at Jimmy Johnson. I know we still have a long way to go. He's in amongst teammates. You've got Mark Martin and Kurt Busch up there that's teammates. You have Kevin Harvick, Robbie Gordon up there that's teammates. And you have Michael Waltrip and Dale Earnhardt Jr. that's up there. And even though Jimmy Johnson has three teammates, they're way at the back. He has no help up there whatsoever. Plus, he has a problem. He's going to have to come to pit road. Now, everybody probably will when we go back to green, but he's out of he's going to be out of fuel pretty soon. He took a short, quick stop and didn't take a full load of fuel, so he's getting low on fuel. He's going to have to come to pit road soon. Now, it used to be you wanted to have a teammate so that you could share resources in the shop and share testing dates. But now today, at this Daytona 500, team racing has really taken on a new meaning in this sport. And you know what? We've watched Jimmy Johnson all weekend long. We've had cameras in his car, cameras in Jeff Gordon's car. We've, we've kind of critiqued his driving, what he was doing, what he was not doing. And I believe it's helped him because he's driven a really smart race today. And he's driven, he's used the traffic. You know, he was complaining about, I don't know which lane to go with and how to keep cars from passing me. He's done a lot better job today than he did uh, in practice. Well, it's hard to believe it's only his second Daytona 500. Here's Steve Burns. Mike with Jeremy Mayfield, who has a top 10 finish as of right now. You want to get this thing restarted, Jeremy? Well, the uh, you know our Dodge dealers Dodge seemed like it was uh, really running good after the rain, you know, after rain delays. So we feel pretty good about it. But right now we're sitting in the top 10, so we're really not uh, 
concerned either way. You know, if it did rain it out, we, uh, we'll take what we got and go home. But uh, if we go back, we feel real confident that, uh, you know, our Dodge will hopefully stay in the top ten. Jeremy, you guys struggled a bit last year. Do you feel better about how your team is progressing this year? I feel real good about it. You know, we've uh, even before we got here, we felt real good about, you know, the way the, the chemistry and all the people that's, that we got there now is working together and uh, really feel good about it, you know, and uh, just uh, want to keep working hard and, you know, be competitive week in and week out. And I think uh, this is probably the, the best chance I feel like we've had in a long time by uh, as far as the team chemistry and stuff. So we feel good about it. You know, a lot of people overlook that fact. You know, they think racing, they look at the driver, but it really is a team sport. It requires that chemistry you're talking about. It really does. And um, sometimes you can have all the best people in the world and uh, they just can't work together very well or don't communicate well. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, a lot of teams face that. There's a lot of teams up and down the, the pit road here that's, that's facing that right now. But this is probably the best situation I've been in a long time. And, you know, got Kenny, uh, Francis, and Josh Brown, and Mike Shiplett, <laughs> Eric, you know, Ray, and all the guys have been really doing uh, a good job about um, – you know, trying to build that chemistry deal, and I think this is uh, the best fit I've ever had. All right, best of luck, Jeremy. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. And that's the uh, Daytona 500 to the moment. And 109 laps completed. Michael Walter leading Kurt Busch, Jimmy Johnson third, and we'll be back live here at the Daytona Interna International Speedway in a rain delay. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. Ladies and gentlemen, it's official. The rain has persisted. It's going to continue through the night. The race has been called, and Michael Waltrip is a two-time champion of the Daytona 500. No, I tell you what, uh, what a thrill. Uh, what a great accomplishment for him, his team, and well, I know it's just got to make him. Well, look at him. Let it rain, baby. He's had a great speed weeks. <laughs> And his second Daytona 500 win. I guess we've done three races from here, and he's won all three of them. Kurt Busch finishes second. Jimmy Johnson is third. Kevin Harvick, Mark Martin. Yes. And a kiss. By Buffy for 45 years, Michael. So many drivers have tried to win this race and never won it. You've won it twice. How special! I can't believe it. I was telling Buffy, I heard that it hadn't been shortened since 1966. I said they're due. It's got to be about time when we got shortened up again. So thankful, so thankful for Dale Earnhardt. Um, he made this place even more special to me, watching him over the years, and I know his heart. And uh, he was about this place. And uh, I know he's smiling now. And uh, he was about this place. He just he rep he, he this place and he were one. And uh, if you're gonna die when it's time to die, you need to go somewhere where you where you feel so at ease and at peace and at home. And that describes Dale at Daytona. Uh, I'm just thankful for the opportunity he gave me. Thankful for Teresa, who's running DEI. Oh, all the guys, Slugger. I mean, it's amazing. It's just amazing that we put that car yes. in the front, and then it started raining. And uh, it's just people don't know what, I mean, you just don't know what Daytona means. You can't know unless you've lived your life pursuing dreams that are that come true here. Thank God for a nice rain shower and uh, I prayed for it to rain. I prayed for God to forgive me for the dumb things I do and to make me a better person and then I asked for what I want. And today I really wanted some rain. Woo! Slugger, you told me that you dreamed of winning this. Michael has a ring. You desperately wanted a ring. How special for you to get your first? It's awesome. You know, we won here in July and, and when we left here we said we're going to come back in February and we're going to do it all over again. So to win the last two races they told us special. Uh, man, for being a kid from Maine to win Daytona 500, I, I just can't tell you how great it feels, you know. Um, I'd like to say a special hello to Helen Watson. Uh, her, her husband passed away, and uh, I'll see you guys Monday. Now, people don't realize how much effort you have put <laughs> into this. As Ty Norris comes in. Yeah, baby. Oh, man. Oh, thank you. 1,600 on-track miles with this race yeah. car and testing. Let's start walking okay. to victory lane. I want to go. We can get that trophy. 1,600 miles of on-track testing with this race car. 40 hours in the wind tunnel. I tell you, Steve Mayo and Andy Johnson, even Paul Wise. You know, Paul Wise was there 
help us win this race and make this car the best it can be. We gotta go this way. But uh, <laughs> I, I've been here before, I don't remember where it's at. But uh, Well, they've changed it because of the rain. That's why it's throwing you off. It, is, is it raining? I didn't know that. Kind of numb, but you know, like I said, it, it's, so many people have worked on this race car. We started building it back in May, like, like we told you earlier. We, DEI built the Speedway program for General Motors of the 2003 Monte Carlo. And this is the car we did all development work, so it's been fast off a truck, and it just makes me look good. And, and having Michael as the, the best restricted plate racer. And, and the good news, you're losing that car to Daytona USA. Congratulations, Thank Slugger. You, I appreciate it. A car owner from North Carolina, a driver from Kentucky, a crew chief from Maine, win the Daytona 500. You know, I'm so happy for Michael Walter because two years ago when he won this race, he really couldn't enjoy it because just a few hours after taking that checkered flag, his best friend, his car owner, was pronounced dead. But you know what? They can enjoy it because, trust me, Dale Earnhardt Sr. is enjoying this victory for these guys. Well, there's a lot of people that uh, that Michael, I'm sure, would be glad saw him win this race. But the two people I think he wished most could have seen him was Dale Earnhardt and our dad. 33 drivers finished on the lead lap, and it's on to Rockingham. Fox will have coverage of the Subway 400 next Sunday. Let's meet the driver who finished third. Here's Dick. And Jimmy Johnson almost won the Daytona 500 in the lead, and the two DER cars went blowing on by. Okay to finish third? Uh, it's better than fourth. You know, I, if we, the rain would have been there 10 minutes earlier, uh, Chad's great pit calls uh, would have won us the Daytona 500. But uh, just like, you know, we were trying to tell ourselves last year, we were so close to the championship and it slipped through our fingers. Uh, you've got to lose them before you win them. And I'm so proud of all the effort put forth by the Team Lowe's Racing Group and everyone at Hendrick Motorsports. Uh, you know, come out with a new car and everything that's been going on and be this strong right out of the box is great. I've learned a lot out there, and it's just a total team effort. And I'm very proud of everybody on the Lowe's team. And, and uh, disappointed, uh, but I knew I was in trouble one way or another there when we were going back to green and uh, tried to play my cards uh, the best way I knew how. But unfortunately, the 33 got a bad start and it allowed uh, Michael to drop down. And then once that happened, I was high and dry. But uh, we're, you know, we're happy third in points, maybe second in points because we led some laps and a uh, good way to start the season. It sure is. You got a lot to be proud of. Congratulations, Mike. Chevy congratulates Michael Waltrip and the number 15 Monte Carlo team on today's big win. Another reason why Chevy says, wherever there's a winner circle, we'll be there. Five yellow flags, two red flags for rain. A lot of single filing in the front of the show, but the pass for the win. Michael Walter follows his teammate underneath Jimmy Johnson. And that was the Chevy winning moment. A lot of single filing at the front of the show, but Daryl, the racing in that last green flag segment, that had everybody's pulse racing. Well, that was the race and everybody knew it. But you know, I drugged that little scoundrel down here when he was seven years old to watch me race. Never had any idea he'd win. Now he's won it twice. Right. And, uh, you know, you talked about it, Daryl. You know, probably the best race car here all week long. He may have just used that luck bank up because a part that's probably less than $200 possibly cost him a Daytona 500 victory, but his teammate prevailed from it. Yep, Dale Earnhardt Jr., like his dad so many years, came down here and had little things cost him the 500 after a week of success. But Dale Earnhardt Incorporated is in victory lane for the 500. Hope you've enjoyed it. Chris Myers. All right, thanks, guys. Well, it was a little bit anticlimactic, but certainly dramatic for Michael Waltrip and only the uh, eighth driver to win the Daytona 500 more than once. What about, and you see there, they're certainly enjoying every moment, uh, the dominance of not only DEI at this track, but, but Chevrolet. Oh, it's just it's very clear cut right now. These guys here, they have definitely got the number of this racetrack, but the dominance of Michael Waltrip down here at Daytona is starting to come pretty, come pretty clear also because, hey, he's got three Daytona wins. He's got two 500s and a 400, so uh, he likes his place pretty well. Which driver has the biggest beef about this thing being uh, called early officially? Not, not the questioning that, but certainly that they missed an opportunity to win a race they could have won. From second on back, anybody that was in the lead lap, including Dale Earnhardt Jr., who's still a one lap down, they all have a legitimate gripe of saying, if he could have went on, went on another bit, 200 and what, 70 miles, I could have won this race. I mean, there's a lot of guys that are going to be saying uh, what could have happened 
didn't happen. Michael Waltrip the winner and we'll see if uh, he can keep it rolling next weekend the scene shifting to the rock for another full weekend of racing action Friday the Bush series qualifying on speed followed by Winston kept qualifying on Fox Sports net Saturday it's NASCAR Bush series racing presented by John Deere that's on FX followed by Winston Cup practice and Sunday start your day with NASCAR this morning on Fox Sports net followed by the world's best drivers going bumper to bumper at the rock of the subway 400 NASCAR returning next weekend across the Fox family of networks and it has been an incredible speed weeks as there is a Teresa Earnhardt the owner of DEI with the wife of Michael Walter His nickname is Buffy over speed weeks we've uh, covered more than 2700 laps cars going around that's 6907 miles you could drive uh, from Daytona to Los Angeles back and forth a few times and over the Fox family of networks of more than 100 hours of uh, coverage uh, whether that be Fox FX or Speed Channel the coordinating director of NASCAR and Fox already kept her today's race produced by Neil Goldberg pit producers Pam Miller and David Blatt also Dave Hill and Steve Stump technical producers Gary Lang produced the opening sequence associate uh, directors Greg Scopatoni Barry Landis and Derek Manning associate producers Bill Richards and Chris Long broadcast associates Eric Billigmeyer and Judy Wong and Jeremy Green technical director Richie Vasili audio mixer Fred Aldo's pre-race show produced by Scott Ackerson directed by Rich Russo associate director Charles Chuck McDonald coordinating producer of NASCAR on Fox Richie Zions studio technical supervisor Jack Simmons senior producer Bill Brown executive producer of Fox Sports on Ed Gorin and David Hill for all of us here I'm Chris Myers thanks for being a part of our NASCAR coverage join us each weekend for more make it appointment viewing the great American race was sweet especially for Michael Walter